Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin. These men spoke up for what they thought was right. From their courage came such documents as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. From their willingness to speak what was sometimes unpopular but right, we enjoy such liberties as freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms, and freedom of religion. There are those who still wish to oppress our freedoms, and there are still patriots willing to stand up and defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Men like Zeb Bell, who honor our founding fathers and what they stood for. It's now time for Zeb at the ranch, speaking up and defending your freedoms. Brought to you by Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and all of the other great advertisers on the program. And now, Zeb Bell. Poor old John was on his deathbed and gasped pitifully. Give me one last request, dear, he said. Of course, John, his wife said softly. Six months after I die, John said, I want you to marry Bob. His wife said, But I thought you hated Bob. And with his last breath, John said, I do. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Here comes Kate Smith, and God bless America on a Tuesday. Oh, we've got a busy, busy day today. Good morning, good morning. Oh, good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm Zeb Bell, Zeb at the Ranch, with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you. And, of course, some of our great advertisers like Western Way Services, always at your disposal. Call them, get on the route service at 734-6969. Now, without further ado, I hope we've got a Pledge of Allegiance person. Good morning. How are you this morning, young man? Well, I am great. Give us the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, by the way, Rotten, I've got a message for you. Next week on Thursday is Lunch Bunch, and please tell your wife that they're going to be checking squirt guns at the door. I'll tell her. <laughs> Thanks. Appreciate it. See you later. <laughs> okay. I love those folks. Hey, it's time for the weather. We start every day off with the weather with our friends at Cheney Flooring and Home Design. 1228 Oakley Avenue in Burley. Ooh, look for the blue door. You know, I've got page after page after page of all the things that they have recommended, you know, for your uh, beautification and personalization of your home. I mean, carpet and flooring and kitchen construction. Boy, old Kyle, he loves Loves that kitchen construction to come up with something really unique for you. All the home decor items, whatever you need to make your house a home. At Genie Flooring and Home Design, 1228 Oakley Avenue in Burley. Look for that blue door. And right now, here's the weather. Here's your weather forecast for this Tuesday, August 16th. It's going to be a nice day, but a little on the warm side, which is going to remain that way at least until we get towards the weekend. Sunny skies for today. Expect a high of 93. Tonight, low of 56. Tomorrow, mostly sunny skies. High of 91 with an overnight low of 58. Looks like the wind's going to be picking up as we move through the week as well. Steady winds out of the west for today, out of the southeast, right around 5 miles an hour. Tomorrow, kicking up to about 7 for Thursday, partly cloudy, high of 90 winds out of the southwest, right around 10 miles an hour. Then for Friday, the winds are going to be dropping the temperatures down quite a bit. It's going to be windy out of the northwest, right around 15 miles an hour. Mostly sunny skies, but only going to see a high of 71 as we get on into the weekend. Looks like it's going to be slightly breezy, and highs are going to be in the upper 70s to low 80s. 
Yesterday's high was 89. The overnight low was 53. That is your weather for Zephyr Thoran. Boy, now that is a comprehensive weather forecast. Thank you, Gina. Great job. And brought to you by Cheney Flooring and Home Design, 1228 Oakley Avenue in Burley, 678-6945. Look for the blue door. Hey, by the way, don't forget, Thursday is sale day at the Burley Livestock Sale Yard, 1100 Occidental Avenue in Burley with Merv May, Kay Draghi, and Lance Udy. Mm-hmm. The sale that works for you. Call the number 678-9411 for livestock consignment information on the sale. Everything at Burley Livestock Sale Yard. Big sale on Thursdays at 11 a.m. Don't you miss it. You know, in just a moment, I'm going to uh, take a little time to thank an individual that is absolutely so talented in this area and i want to give him the accolades necessary i think for all the things that he's done and all the things he's been involved in i'll talk about that in just a moment I want to remind you about daryl's cleaners at 1223 albion avenue in burley and kevin and cindy and the whole crew you take those old rumply crumply dirties in there and say please please can you clean these and then you go to pick them up and it's like oh <gasps> Oh, wow, where did all these new clothes come from? They do a fantastic job. And by the way, if you prepay, you get 10% discount. Saving you money at Daryl's Cleaners, 1223 Albion Avenue in Burley. You stop in and see them today. Also want to mention our friends at SafeLink Internet. Oh, my goodness. They've extended their hours of technical support over there. And their new hours, I understand, are like 6 in the morning till 12 a.m. midnight, seven days a week. And they are there to serve you. Please get on the program today. You'll really appreciate the fast, reliable service and the nice people. At 677-8000, SafeLink Internet, serving you and your family. I have... uh, employed the help of Gary Shoresman to help me put together the finalization of my book. And uh, this man has written so many books and is so well organized. And if the word organize is in your dictionary, you might look up organize and you'll see Gary Shoresman's picture right next to it. This man has uh, all of his books on sale at the Rupert the Bookstore. And I highly recommend you get in there. I mean, his books, like the one I just was uh, obtained recently from him, is absolutely phenomenal on the Rupert Fourth of July celebration. And the way he put it together and the way you can follow it and enjoy it and and the pictures and the stories and everything, absolutely phenomenal. I don't care if it's on uh, anything to do with Minidoka County, Rupert, whatever, and the fire department. Everything he's written about is so well organized. And uh, I just just can't say enough about him and all of his help to me and my lovely wife Deanne. We really appreciate it. Gary Shoresman, absolutely a Magic Valley treasure, and uh, we thank him very much. Uh, calls are welcome, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. The number to call and say, hey, I'd like to stop in real quick. I'm in a hurry, and can you have my order on the counter? They will. 678-0459. They're open 730 to 5 Monday through Friday. And all your heating and electrical needs, cooling needs, <laughs> I'm telling you, uh, I know I'm not too early in saying, you know what, I think we're going to have a uh, harsh, cold fall. You better be ready. Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. And if you're hungry like I am all the time, but I've uh, had to kind of watch my weight a little bit as I've been laying around recouping, Oh, you better get on over to Denny's Restaurant, 611 Overland in Burley and in Twin Falls at 291 Pole Line. They've got a special going on now. I had to swallow and kind of lick my lips because, oh, it's good. Buttermilk pancakes made with real butter, real milk, real eggs, and a hint of vanilla, hand-mixed and griddled until golden brown for fluffier, tasty, betty, better buttermilk pancakes. Can I try that again? For fluffier, tastier, better buttermilk pancakes. <laughs> 
Just stop in and eat them, doggone it. They're good. At Denny's Restaurant, 611 Overland and Burley, the home of Zeb's Lunch Bunch. And we will be there for Lunch Bunch next Thursday, the 25th. All right, give us a call, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Had Elvis Presley lived and not just driven himself over the edge with drug abuse, he would have been 81. 81. Uh, he died 39 years ago, as a matter of fact, and had severe drug problems. I was uh, listening to a little segment on television this morning. And he was so wrapped up in his drug abuse and pill taking. They said, uh, "Now I'm I'm not exactly sure I heard this correctly because it sounds absolutely outlandish." But a I believe stepson to Elvis said that in a book that he has written uh, in regards to Elvis's life and everything else living there at Graceland that Elvis had taken close to 10,000 pills in the last couple of months of his life. Oh, my goodness sakes, I can't even imagine. But anyhow, uh, he would have been 81. He died 39 years ago. Calls are welcome, 436-224-1866-927-4587. want to also thank very much the people at Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation, Nick Greenwell and all the physical therapists. You know, they get there early in the morning, and they've got appointments to help people all day long, and they know all the exercises, all the sports medicine. They've got the only hydrotherapy pool of its kind in the area, and they can help you get back to being you. Now, I'm going to be starting in there again in a couple of weeks. As a matter of fact, i got to head to Salt Lake next week, and they're going to give me the A-OK or the, hey, wait a minute. I'm hoping it's the A-OK. And uh, I guarantee you the Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation folks at 1263 Bennett Avenue Suite 2 in Burley can help you get back to being you. Call for an appointment at 678-1191, Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation. Caller, I'll be right there. Stand by. I want to also remind everybody about Barry Equipment and Rental. Oh, my goodness. They've got all the equipment you need, whether you need to rent it or buy it, or maybe you've got some equipment that needs parts and service. They can help you with that, too. They have the equipment to get the job done right. Three locations, South Lincoln and Jerome, Addison Avenue West in Twin Falls, and 159 West Highway 30 in Burley. I'm telling you, these are good people, knowledgeable people, helpful people. At Barry Equipment and Rental, you stop in and see them today. Caller, good morning. How are you? Good morning, Zeb. I am great this morning. Tony, you... Paint job. Well, you you called up yesterday at my home and said that you had heard something that really piqued your interest on Lou Dobbs tonight, last evening. What was it? Well, it was about what's happening here in Twin Falls with uh, all these uh, illegals and whoever else wants to cross the border is ending up here in, uh, in Twin Falls. And uh, my major concern is with the leadership we have here in Twin Falls, plus the power that the uh, college has over our city council and everything else, uh, my feelings are that uh, Twin Falls is going to become a sanctuary city. Well, now, just exactly, I did not hear the remarks. I want to make this poignantly clear prior to any more of our conversation. I did not hear the remarks on Lou Dobbs' show last night. Uh, when Tony called me, I was eating dinner, and I did not hear it. I'm sorry. But basically, Tony, and I know you'll keep it right to the facts, what did Lou Dobbs say about Twin Falls and this area, basically? Well, what uh, Lou Dobbs was saying is what's happened in uh, other areas with all this uncontrolled population coming in, the same thing is happening right here in Twin Falls. Okay. And the concerns were there because Lou Dobbs is a former resident uh, of the Rupert area, and uh, so he's got grave concerns over what's happening with the refugees and also the lack of enforcement of immigration policies, correct? Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, I'm really concerned about this because 
basically, I went through something like this uh, many, many years ago in the city that I left. And I see it happening here. We're going to be taken over. Well, we are. And, you know, one of the things, I want to get your quick response to this, because this is the way I feel. And I don't care if they want to call me a bigot or a hate monger or whatever. I've been called a lot worse. I couldn't care less. Um, I'm very concerned for our culture. I'm very concerned for our Western culture, our heritage. I'm very concerned that we're giving all the gimmies to the other people coming in. Oh, well, you want to have your culture here? Go ahead and expand on it. Oh, well, you want to do this with your language? Go ahead and expand on it. I am at a point right now where I'm going to be very much like a cranky old man and say, hey, wait a minute. You want to come to this country, then you meld into our country, our customs, and our language, I'm sick and tired of seeing our society, our culture, and our language being diminished. Would you agree or not? Oh, absolutely. Uh, The thing of it is, uh, in my case, I have over 10 years military service, and there are many guys that have much more time in the service and been wounded and everything, and they are not able to to get the benefits that these freeloaders are getting when they pour into this country. Yeah. And this, many other countries are glad to get rid of these people, bring them over here, dump them on you and I, and our children will be suffering because there's not enough money to put our children into college, but these people are getting free medical, free dental, free this and free that. Yeah. I'm just as upset as anybody else. I agree with you. And uh, I think it's high time people that had the beliefs that we need to perpetrate our own culture, perpetrate and help our own people, and perpetrate and help our own economic uh, problems in this country, over and above uh, taking more of our tax dollars, et cetera, and just kind of a gimme campaign. I agree with you, Tony, and thank you for your call this morning. Oh, you're welcome, Zeb. All right, my Good friend. Thank you very much. Really appreciate that uh, family, uh, Tony and Mary in Twin Falls. Thank you. Hey, some of the merchants that wish you a fun time at the Cache County Fair this week. It's going on all this week. Butte Irrigation at 116 South, 600 West Highway 27 in Paul. And their new location right there in Kimberly Road, north of uh, Kimberly by Red Cap Corner. Oh, 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 my. They've got all the big per tower re- Rebates from Zomatic and huge discounts from Butte Irrigation make the fall the best time of the year to buy the new Zomatic pivots. Yep, check it out today. Remember, they will get you wet. Butte Irrigation. Don't forget to Burley Glass, 1029 Overland and Burley with Gentle Ben and the crew. These are good people. These are people that know windows. These are people that know uh, energy efficiency. And uh, they've got everything right there for you at Burley Glass, 1029 Overland and Burley. Please call them today, 678-1459. And Streamline Precision, 120 South, 100 West of Burley with my buddy Tim and the rest of the crew. Streamline Precision can build your steel buildings just the way you want them. Agricultural, industrial, and community buildings, they can do it all. Call Tim at 431-7314, Streamline Precision. All calls are welcome and appreciated, so give me a jingle on the landline. I'd love to hear from you. Um, Donald Trump gave a speech yesterday. Now, I really don't care if you like Trump or not, (laughs) certainly. You have to put him a couple of pegs above Hillary Clinton. My goodness, the mess we're going to be in with her would be absolutely atrocious. Well, he made a speech yesterday in Ohio, and it was a speech that I thought, I listened to the whole speech in its entirety, and he did it off of a teleprompter, okay? He did a very good job. It was very solemn, it was very articulate, it was very direct, and it spelled out the major threats that we have with Islamic terrorists and refugees that have not been vetted. It was a very good speech. Whether it's going to up him in the polls remains to be seen. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning. Can I deviate just a little bit? Well, you already did. Uh, <laughs> in the 
Farm Bureau Quarterly magazine, my wife was reading to me about the shortage of labor this harvest season because of Giovanni and a few places like this that are paying the higher wages mm -hmm. and everything. Uh, people don't want to work on the farm anymore. And I just wonder what your thoughts are. Well, my thoughts are this. Uh, I absolutely want to see agriculture flourish. Agriculture has been the backbone of my business for the last 45 years. And I absolutely want to see it go to higher levels, and I want to see all the farmers and ranchers make a lot of money, because then, of course, everybody else flourishes here in the valley. But I also want to make sure that they have the labor, and I think that there are immigration programs, quite frankly, Keith, that could be rejuvenated, and there have been many in the past, which would allow labor to come up here, work during the harvest season, and then return home. I'm not going to get into the H, uh, B, this, that, and the other status. I'm just going to go into a very generic saying that we need to flourish with labor that can come up here, get the job done for our American farmers and ranchers, and then go back to their home country and not stay here and become, quite frankly, a burden to our Social Security system and other parts of our government. But there are ways and means that we can get the labor here necessary, and I think they should be achieved and perceived as something necessary. You know, this reminds me of back 50 years ago when we used to have what they call the labor camp, and it's located at uh, 200 South, uh, 50 East, or Highland Avenue. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. There was a labor camp, and they used to bring up the Navajo Indians to thin the beets, because back then they were planted quite thickly, and you had to thin them out. Yeah, yeah. And every spring, early, they would bring them in. And they bring them in trucks with a steak body on them and a canvas over the top. And maybe four or five families would be in the back of that truck. And they would go to work for various farmers. This was instituted by the Amalgamated Sugar Company. Mm -hmm. They owned the labor camp and, and everything. And these people worked through the season. And then when the time came, they loaded up in the trucks and went home. Keith, no but wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know as well as I do that there shouldn't be a finding labor problem. You know, when I look at the many, many, and I've had experts in the field, so this isn't just Zeb Bell talking or making things up. I have talked to many people involved in employment. I have talked to many people involved in knowing what is needed, and the people are out there. Our welfare system, I want you to agree or disagree with me. I have said and called for on this program a complete evaluation of all the people that are drawing public money on the dole, welfare, and I said on the previous programs, I think that there would be an enormous figure, an enormous percentage of people that are drawing money out of your pocket and mine that are physically able to get up, go to work, and achieve something. I get really bitter when I hear that our farmers and ranchers are having a hard time trying to fill labor on the farm, the ranch, the dairy, whatever, when we have so many people that are on the dole that are physically able, but they're too doggone lazy to go to work. Now you're going to make me angry. <laughs> you know, it, it, it comes right back to that labor camp situation I'm talking about. These people didn't expect anything except a job for the summer. Yeah. They bought their own groceries. They took care of themselves. And the sugar could company, of course, furnished their housing and everything. They didn't have cars or anything. I lived on Orland Avenue back then, and we'd see these Indian people walk back and forth from from there to town and yeah. everything and you know the, the community accepted it and everything was fine and these people were happy because they had something to do during the summer months all right i gotta run but i just want to say this to you that i'll still be uh very adamant about what i just said 
I am absolutely livid that we're having labor problems in this country when we are giving giving a living to many that are just too lazy to work, and that needs to stop. Thank you for your phone call. I appreciate it. Yeah, that's the problem we have in Milwaukee right today. Well, that's that's a problem that uh, we're going to talk about in just a little bit. I agree with you. i got to run and do a commercial, Keith. Thank you so much. All right, sir. Calls welcome, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. want to remind you about Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids and their wellness programs for your better hearing. Yes, call 312-0957 and say, you know what, I'm missing some things. I can't hear my wife. Well, wait a minute, maybe that's a bad analogy. Maybe you're not intentionally hearing your wife. Well, you're having trouble hearing the grandkids or whatever. You just be sure and give a call. Call to that number, 3120957, and get scheduled for hearing screening today with the lovely Dr. Christine Pickup at Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids, right across from the Minidoka Hospital Emergency Room, and waiting right now to serve you. Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. All right, calls are welcome, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. Keith said something just a minute ago about Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And I want to elaborate a little bit more about that. And I know that there are those in the audience, the liberals, they just absolutely, they like to sit there and nitpick and try to pick apart everything I say and then throw it back in my face. Well, get ready to throw. Uh, The blacks in Milwaukee and other areas across the United States, whether it's Baltimore or whether it's Milwaukee, or whether it was Ferguson, Missouri, it doesn't make any difference where. The blacks burning their neighborhoods is about as stupid as any group could be to cut their nose off to spite their face. Businesses that they have burned in their neighborhoods i.e. what happened with the BP gas station in that area of Milwaukee the other night. Who really was hurt by the burning of that gas station? When you think about it, that gas station in a neighborhood that is not really user-friendly, which they proved, is now gone forever, forever. Who or what business, again, I'll repeat those two, who or what business in their right mind would try to come back there to rebuild a business in the middle of the travesty of these people looting and burning and absolutely desecrating their communities? What they did is hurt themselves. And hold on, caller, I'll be right there. And why in the world should you and me and the American taxpayer be on the hook through government bailout money to go in there and rebuild something that these absolutely worthless people are going to go and burn down again? Caller, good morning. You're on the air. It's it's so childish and juvenile that you say to yourself, just like your child is in the bedroom, he's maybe 12, and he's decided that he's a victim, and he's being mistreated, so he decides to tear the hell out of his own room, or go out into the garage and beat the hell out of his mom and dad's car, or whatever. And you say to yourself, if this isn't the most childish, juvenile thing you've ever seen, and they just do it, they're acting out. They need to be put on timeout, like you're in a child care. And you see, they don't have jobs, but they have phones. They don't have jobs, but they got rent assistance. They don't have jobs, but they got food stamps. And then they have all this time on their hands. Their idle, idle hands are the devil's handiwork, I guess. And in this case, they're pretty handy. 
Why in the world aren't more Americans like myself and you and others absolutely in an uproar and calling Crapo and Rich and the other people of so-called importance in our political system and letting them know that, by golly, not one single dime, not one single dime needs to go for reparations back in those communities where these absolute nincompoops are burning the businesses down. And then they turn around and say, well, our neighborhood's not as good as the white neighborhood. Why, we want this and we want that. And we're going to refurbish it at our expense. And then they'll go back and have another revolt and they'll burn things down again. I mean, just leave it the way it is. And if they can't pull themselves up by their own bootstraps, if they don't have the religious leadership and the community leadership to say, wait a minute, this is stupid. Let's go out and rebuild and redo what we're, what we're doing and make it right, make it fit into civilization, I'm not going to help them. Well, this is the thing. Every day when you drive through the country, the neighborhoods of your town and your, you know, county, and you see people out maintaining their property, pride of ownership, and they have worked hard to own it. It is a dream. They are proud. These people have had everything given to them since Johnson. It's just like David Clark said last night. It started when Johnson, the whatever, the new, whatever, the new society, it ain't the new deal, I don't know what it was. It was just a Democrat creating votes and voters. And look what we've got when you say to yourself, who, there's people out there, blacks, who know what David Clark is saying is true, but he gets no, he gets no notoriety other than on Fox. And then they got him painted as a right wing. And he is as objective and as fair and caring about his fellow blacks as anybody I know. Well, Randy, what sense does it make for blacks or Hispanics or Asians or Caucasians, if they're upset, to destroy their environment? I mean, you've got to sit there and you've got to talk to me for a long time to explain how somebody could be that dumb. You know, if anything... Why don't they get the leaders of their communities together and say, okay, well, we feel like this isn't going on. Maybe we're not having the best of education. Well, let's try to make sure that we work with the parents in the homes, the families that don't have the dads. Let's have a big brother mentoring program. The blacks or Hispanics, any group of people can raise themselves up by their own bootstraps if they try and they not expecting all the money out of your pocket and mine. Well, look at this. It's Mr. Obama and Hillary and Valerie Jarrett. If they cared, they would make frequent trips to these neighborhoods and they would speak up. Instead of throwing money at it and going golfing or throwing money at it and uh, getting money for your foundation, these pe- the people that are leading our country at this point and Hillary are so depraved that they would they they have no human compassion yeah well i know that but wait a minute just just give me a short answer if all of a sudden your business goes south today god forbid that it works that way but all of a sudden it goes south and you're sitting there going oh whoa is me i don't have anything coming in i'm i'm out of money i don't have enough to buy shoes i'm going to go burn down my house now isn't that the dumbest thing you ever heard of in your life well it's like okay i live in town down the street is a gas station the owner lives in burley i know him and i said it would be like i'm frustrated because of something so I go down the street and I somehow ignite his business, <laughs> and uh, that's going to really help us all out. You know? Oh, brother. I mean, it, it, it's like I said, they're like children in a child care who are acting out to get attention. That's all it is, attention. Yep. And you put them on time out so they can stop and ponder <laughs> and think. I'm thinking of something... I'm thinking of something a little bit more firm than time out. Randy, I got another call waiting, and I appreciate you. God bless you, man. Thanks. Caller, I'll be right there. Don't go away. Today is day number two 
of the Cache County Fair and Rodeo. Oh my goodness, this morning at 7 they entered all the 4-H and FFA swine. And this morning at 9 o'clock in just a little bit they're going to have the big dog show at the Outdoor Livestock Arena. And let's see what else is cooking today. They're going to have entertainment all afternoon on the free stage. And tonight, tonight they're going to have the Team Ranch sorting in the big arena at 7 p.m. Oh my, that's always been some fun to go to at the Cache County Fair and Rodeo all the way through this next Saturday. Be sure and attend and have fun at your Cassia County Fair. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Caller, good morning. Real good show this morning, Zeb. Thank you, sir. Well, I'd like to shift the crime problem to white-collar crime. Um, Not to diminish what we're all talking about this morning, Now, what I'm talking about is the Federal Reserve System. Uh Uh-huh. Now, you know, that system, in my opinion, is a criminal system operating 24 hours a day. And unbeknownst to a lot of us, that... These, these, this white-collar crime in this nation is making it difficult for, for businesses, small businesses, to meet the bottom line. I agree. Now, thanks. And I don't, this may or may not solve these young males who don't have jobs, but it would empower employers, small business, who are just being taken to the cleaners every day by the Federal Reserve. And so I'd like to, I'm I'm focusing a little more attention on that system. You know, sir, I agree with you as far as white-collar crime, and I agree with you with the fraud. I agree with you on the greed. I agree with you on the very deceptive system that has been created and permeated in this country for those that are greedy and want to get rich quick at the expense of other human beings. And I've said this for a long time on my program. If you're a listener, you know it's true. That uh, from the top down, government all the way through business into what's happening in Milwaukee, Ferguson, and other places. Our country, and please bear with me on this statement, our country is going to hell in a handbasket because we've lost the value system that this country was founded on. The value system of honesty, morality, and helping your fellow man. And I'll guarantee you one thing. I am right now, I I said it the other day, my milk of human kindness is out. It's empty. The gallon is going to be thrown out of the refrigerator. We've got to clean this country up. And quite frankly, I don't see anything happening in that regard. Well, here's it's already it written in in print, and that is the Congress is supposed to report to the uh, Department of Treasury. Yeah, that's the way our money is supposed to be uh, managed. So <clears throat> this Federal Reserve, this white collar crime, there, the solution is in print. I agree. That's, that's all I got. No, I agree with you, and, and sir, thank you for bringing that other aspect of it up, because we've got a lot of criminality in this country, a lot of dipping into the till, if you will, on all sides of the uh, issue, and thank you for that. You're welcome. God bless you, sir. Thank you. Caller, yeah, I'll do your call before I go to the weather. Go ahead, please. Well, Zeb, good morning. Um, you know, it's, it's our whole culture has deteriorated in my lifetime and years. We're about on the same page as far as age, and I can tell you it's uh, insane that people aren't recognizing it, especially Christians. Uh, you know, and I, I think that we've been so neutralized, you know, we're supposed to be compassionate toward all these refugees and so forth. I was just reading a report from a Catholic priest that, you know, how naive can we be to think they are all as well? And uh, 
when it really isn't. Well, hold on a second. Wait a minute. You just made a very good point. Adrian, wait a minute. All the general breakdown of morality, whether, you know, used to be my father taught me that your, your word was your bond. Well, I can tell you that doesn't apply anymore. You have to have it. Even the lawyers uh, find ways to get around the legal documents. And so we've reached this point. And but look what's happening. God said that our founding fathers way back when said that if we stop worshiping Jesus Christ as the Lord of the land, that we would have natural calamities come upon this nation. Just look at what's happening in Louisiana mm -hmm. and different parts of the country, the fires in California, et cetera, et cetera. It just goes on and on and on. And God's protective hand is 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 not there anymore. He's removing that. We're on our own. But Christians, we better take a stand against these things and just not be going to church on Sunday and thinking all is well. We need to be getting hold of those politicians. Like uh, uh, Bridget Gabriel said, for every phone call, for every email, we represent a thousand people. There's yep. that few of numbers. And I heard that from Earl Butts, who was way back in the Secretary of Agriculture, way back in the 60s. Absolutely. That meeting that I attended. So Absolutely. And you know, everything... <laughs> <laughs> Everything you said this morning is 100% true. And I have said on my program, I've got to get to a weather here, Adrian, but I'll say this to you. I have said on my program for months and months and years that Christians need to not be the wilting little flower over in the corner. They need to stand up. They need to be proud of what they believe in. They need to be proud of what the Bible prophesies. And they need to be very vocal because sooner than later, their voice is going to be diminished. Well, like this Catholic priest pointed out, Islam's domination is world conquest. And, and there, it's fundamental Islam. All of this terrorism is fundamental Islam. It's not extreme. That's their teachings from the Koran. And so we've got to wake up to that fact. And so we are trying to be benevolent to help these people when we've got millions of people out of work as it is, and we're bringing more in here, and they've got diseases and everything else they're bringing in that we haven't heard of for, for a long time. That's right. And it's just incredible. That's right. It's all about the big money, and, of course, it's just about destroying. George Soros wants to destroy this culture, and he's using the liberal Democrats, Hillary and Obama, to, to accomplish that. And I want to say one thing in that Trump is absolutely right that Obama and Hillary created the climate for ISIS to, when you pull out of a, leave a vacuum like they did in Iraq, leave all of our equipment, I mean, they just moved in and, and on they went. I agree. I got I to gotta run and do a weather. I've got so many Christian friends, I can't vote for Trump. Well, we're not. They, if you don't vote for Trump or don't go to the polls at all, Hillary will be elected, and she will finish off this country. I agree. Total destructive. I agree. i got to run to the weather, and I appreciate your remarks. Thanks, Adrian. Thank you so much. You Thank you. Day. He's right. You know, when are we going to stand up and say enough is enough? I am not going to be a wilting flower in the corner. Oh, man. I The other day I got another threat in the form of an email. And it was a threat regarding the conversation that we had with the Alliance Defending Freedom regarding the transgender's use of bathrooms and locker rooms. These people, it just, in some ways it makes me furious, and in other ways it makes me feel sorry for them. That they are demanding, demanding, demanding that we change our attitude on wholesomeness, our religious beliefs, and our morality. Ain't going to happen. Not with me. And not with millions and millions and millions of others. But they demand and they threaten. And to be honest with you, you don't want to threaten me very often. Calls are welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. The weather are now being brought to you by the Urgent Cares. Riverview Urgent Care, Urgent Care of Jerome, and Twin Falls Urgent Care. Minor emergencies, 
but you get major care. They really take care of you. I don't care if you're going in there for an ear infection or if you're going in there for a strain or a sprain or if you got a fracture, whatever you, just get in there. No appointments necessary, and they are there to serve you. It's true. Minor emergencies, major care. Right now, here's Gina with the weather. Here's your weather forecast for this Tuesday, August 16th. It's going to be a nice day, but a little on the warm side, which is going to remain that way at least until we get towards the weekend. Sunny skies for today. Expect a high of 93. Tonight, low of 56. Tomorrow, mostly sunny skies. High of 91 with an overnight low of 58. Looks like the wind's going to be picking up as we move through the week as well. Steady winds out of the west for today, out of the southeast, right around 5 miles an hour. Tomorrow, kicking up to about 7 for Thursday, partly cloudy, high of 90 winds out of the southwest, right around 10 miles an hour. Then for Friday, the winds are going to be dropping the temperatures down quite a bit. It's going to be windy out of the northwest, right around 15 miles an hour. Mostly sunny skies, but only going to see a high of 71 as we get on into the weekend. Looks like it's going to be slightly breezy, and highs are going to be in the upper 70s to low 80s. Yesterday's high was 89. The overnight low was 53. That is your weather for Zephyr Thoran. Wow, what a great job. Gina, you really put your heart and soul into that, and I appreciate it. Brought to you by the Urgent Cares in Twin Falls, Urgent Care of Jerome and Riverview, Urgent Care in Burley. Thanks, Kyle James, for all the effort and all your staff. Go to the UrgentCareOfIdaho.com website. Learn more about these great folks. Minor emergencies, major care. Calls are welcome, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. Don't forget the Gooding County Fair and Pro Rodeo going on this week. Holy cow, are they having a good time over there in Gooding. Oh, my goodness. They're going to have a rodeo costume contest, the best costume Thursday and Friday nights. We'll get two preferred seat tickets to Saturday night's performance. And the best costume on Saturday night receives 100 bucks. Holy cow. Uh, Thursday night's Uncle Sam Red, White, and Blue Night. Friday night, tough enough to wear pink night, and Saturday night, Elvis night at the Gooding County Fair and Pro Rodeo. And then Saturday night, too, the Bullfighters only. Don't forget that. Woo! A lot of fun. Don Gill and the crew over there at the Gooding County Fair and Pro Rodeo. Uh, calls are welcome and appreciated. 436 2244 1866 927 4587. Something happened last night that you didn't know about. No, I have another call coming in on my uh, illustrious phone that I can't answer when I'm on the air. I don't know why people call me on that phone when I'm on the air, my cell phone. I haven't figured that out yet. But anyway, uh, the Obama administration released 15 more detainees from Guantanamo... (laughs) I bit my tongue. You heard me. Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, and are shipping them... To the United Arab Emirates. Many people find this to be extremely reckless, including many in Congress. You know, some of these people that they let go are direct helpers and aides to Osama bin Laden. I'm not kidding. I'm not making this up. I got it right here in front of me. And that means that with the 15 release, there are only approximately 61 detainees left at Guantanamo. And going to the United Arab Emirates, which you know as well as I do, they're going to be on the lam here before too long and probably going back to plan and kill more American soldiers and citizens. But this is so stupid. You know, and and I'm really pointing a kind of a jagged edge here at CSI, the Times News and the Twin Falls City Council, I'm surprised they did invite to have these people come here. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Well, don't give up yet. They probably will. Yeah. Uh, what are What's going on back there? Why can't our senators and congressmen get a lease on this guy unless they're part of the problem? They haven't got the nerve. They haven't got the nerve. I said it, and I'm going to stand behind it. They've lost their backbone. They've lost their intestinal fortitude. Our congressmen and senators are doing nothing more than covering you-know-what for their next election. They haven't got the nerve. That's well stated. Yep. They've sold 
sold their soul for the almighty dollar. Absolutely. What's the matter with politics today, Doug? I'll tell you what the matter with politics today is. It's all a job. It's all a protecting. It's all a covering you-know-what for future elections. They don't care about the constituency. They don't care about what's going on in the world. Hey, hey I've got a cushy job back here in Washington, D.C. with all the perks and all the money that might come in later. I'm not going to jeopardize that. I know it. I know it. That's term limit. We need term limits. I'm not going to argue with you. There was a day in the past where yours truly would stand up and yell and scream in uh, defiance against that. Not any longer, because we need a big broom and a dustpan and clean this mess out. Yep. And, and just think about this. If all those Republicans back there write an open letter to Trump to to try to dump Trump, to stop Trump. Yeah. I think we've got the right man. I because they're they're looking at hey, my gravy train's gonna come to an end if he gets back here, he's gonna upset the apple cart. Yeah, your gravy train might end up holding a whole bunch of rail cars full of rocks. I got to get a Les Schwab spot in here, my dear friend. Call me when we got more time because I wanted to visit with you more about another matter too. All right, buddy, thanks. Don't forget your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. They are our major sponsor, and we really appreciate them. And some of their best-selling tires are on sale right now for your summer travel time, going into Labor Day and everything else. You stop in and see them today. They've got the best in brake service and repair of your brakes. Professionally trained technicians, they know brakes. Also, they know all about front-end alignment, shocks and struts, battery, oh, have they got a complete line of batteries there i know and i'll guarantee you one thing they really provide the best in service they care about you lane and rupert dave on blue lakes and twin mike and buell mike and jerome the twist family and paul daniel on pole line and twin and my buddy randy on overland in burley all seven locations of the best your magic valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Got to run to the news. I'll be back in six. Don't go away, Zeb at the Ranch. Oh, my. Good morning on a Tuesday, the 16th day of August. Good morning to you, Zeb at the Ranch. I'm Zeb Bell with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you. And really, service is the key word at your Les Schwab Tire Centers, along with some of our great advertisers like Western Waste Services. From the canyons of the Snake River and all across southern Idaho. You know, quality, dependability, and value all backed by a locally owned guarantee from our friends at Western Way Services, always at your disposal. Call, get on the route service today. I've been on that route service for years, and believe me, dependable and really reliable. I'll tell you what, these are the good folks. At Western Way Services, always at your disposal. Call them, 734-6969. Right now, I also, before I get my guest on the air, I want to remind everybody, I've got to talk a little bit about the Cassia County merchants that are saying, come on to the Cassia County Fair. And they include our friends at Dot Foods. And they're located, of course, at 1541 West 27th Street in Burley. The number to call, 678-6063. You know, they are. America's leading food redistributor, offering over 70,000 products from over 700 food industry manufacturers in all 50 states. Dot Foods, thank you for all your help in Cassia County. And Golden Valley Warehouse, 468 West, 1000 South of Burley, and the staff over there at Golden Valley Warehouse wants to thank all the customers for another great year. And they say, hey, have fun. Enjoy your Cassia County Fair and Rodeo. Last but not least, it's Kelly's Bearing and Supply at 1407 East Main in Burley. At Kelly's Bearing Supply, don't let your machine sit idle while you're waiting for a part to come in because, hey, you know... 
You'll know where you're at when you get your bearings at Kelly's. Bearings, chains, brackets, everything. Zach and Brett at Kelly's Bearing Supply. Stop in and see them today. Right now, let's go to the phone line. And with us is one of the board of directors for the Cache County Fair and Rodeo for this year, and that is Ryan Samples. Ryan, good morning to you. How are you? Morning, Zeb. How are you? Okay, so here we are, day number two. Actually, day number three after the concert on Saturday night. By the way, how did that concert go on Saturday evening? Tell us about it. Oh, some people liked it. Some people didn't like it. I don't. It was a good. It was what we could do. So <laughs> it was a success, I would say. But you uh. know. We can't please everybody. You know, and nor should you ever have to try. I mean, you got to do your best, put your best boot forward, but uh, like you said, you can't please everybody. Now, yesterday kind of kicked things off, and they got all the booths all filled up, and they got the display set up, and they got everything sold on them. Oh, the food over there is fantastic. Today, now, at 8 o'clock this morning, they started judging the farm mechanics, and at 9 o'clock, just right now, they started the dog show. Uh, tell us a little bit about that dog show going on over there. I think they started off with agility. It looked like when I walked by this morning, they were doing agility, and they'll be going with the dog show probably most at least half the day. So, okay. While the food booths are open, you can come down and get the breakfast and quite a bit of stuff going on. They got the maple bars cooking. Oh, now wait a minute, Mr. Samples. I miss those maple bars. And if you'll remember a couple of years ago, they supplied me with maple bars with a great big slab of bacon on top. They are fantabulous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm sure they probably bring some out. He'd call these guys down over here. They 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 got time, I'm sure. Okay, well now listen, this afternoon <clears throat> pardon me, the at one o'clock you start the entertainment on the free stage. Tell us a little bit about the different kinds of entertainment that are gonna be there. I think it actually starts tomorrow at one o'clock, not today. Oh there's okay. Hypnotist, there's gonna be some uh, extreme pogo stick guys that come put on a show. Um yeah, there's, uh, and then some local talent that will be out there. So All right. Now, it should be good. Okay, now tonight, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, tonight's the Team Ranch sorting, is it not? Yep, yep, tonight's the Team Ranch sorting. Okay, now what's going to happen there? Please. For somebody that's never been to a Team Sorting before, do you get a lot of teams? Do you, what, what's the competition like, Ryan? Let's see, they've got, I think you told me there was 40, 48, 50 teams in each category, the novice and the open. And, wow. Uh, so there should be a pretty, it should be a full night. Okay, so let's look ahead a little bit to Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. What are some of the highlights that you'd like to talk about starting tomorrow? I know the parade's going to be tomorrow in Burley, and I think, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, it starts at about, what, 10 o'clock? Help me on that. Yeah, I think it starts at 10 o'clock and goes all the way down Overland to Maine and back to the fairground. starts at uh, 27th, and so you can line the parade out in the middle of town or wherever you can find a seat. Okay, so that's the big to-do tomorrow with the parade. And uh, what are you going to have in the arena on Wednesday night? Tomorrow night we have the Moto Rodeo Finals. So last night we had the Moto Rodeo. We got it limited down. Tomorrow night the young... The young kids' classes, the women's classes, and then there's going to be some extreme freestyle jumpers that are supposed to come and put on a show for us with the backflips and all that on the motorcycles. And then the finals of the the finals from last night will be tomorrow night. Okay, now is it true that you're going to have a fair board demonstration on how to do a backflip on a Harley? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. We're going to get Tavern to do it. Okay. He's the most agile of us all. <laughs> all right. Hey, tell us a little bit about the big rodeo coming to town, the Ram Rodeo on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Yeah, Thursday night will be our uh, uh, purple night for the domestic violence, the Man Up Crusade. Um, so Barty's in town again. Uh, have, we've also got some uh, specialty acts. The Riata Ranch Cowgirls are here for uh, some trick riding and so it should be a good show. I've worked with that organization many, many times down in California at various rodeos, and they do an outstanding job. Now, uh, this is going to go Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, the Ram Rodeo. What about the Queen Contest? I always get calls regarding the Queen Contest. Tell us about it. 
Uh, clean contest. Clean's breakfast was yesterday morning. Um, clean horsemanship is Thursday afternoon. Um, coronation on Saturday night. Okay. I don't know all the other details in between where they're at and what they're doing, their special meet and greets and all that stuff. So. All right. And then also I want to mention that we've had calls here already this week in regards to paramutual horse racing. What does it look like for this year? Well, from what we hear, there's supposed to be horses. We, we won't know till we start entering tomorrow for the races. We've got we've got ten races on the to enter for. We don't know how many will fill, but we're planning on horse races. It's supposed to be a full card, sounds like. So we're excited about the horse races. Okay, now on Saturday, uh, this will be the last time we'll have a chance to talk. So I want you to highlight, if you would, uh, Saturday morning what's going to happen with the uh, the 4-H and FFA buyer supporter breakfast, and then also the sale. Give us a little background on that. Uh, 7 a.m. will be the buyer's breakfast. It's uh, just come down to the to the show ring, and there's a there's a breakfast for anybody that's going to buy or thinking about buying or just bidding or anything that helps the kids uh immensely so and then the sale starts sharply at eight o'clock there's going to be a lot of animals to sell so they got to be on time okay and then like we said a moment ago the paramutual horse racing is going to be at one o'clock uh one thing we did not talk about the other day and i'll take the blame for it is we didn't mention the carnival a lady called me and said we didn't mention the carnival i thought about that too when we got done the carnival starts tomorrow after the uh, five. Uh, I think it's five in the afternoon. Thursday's Buddy Day. Um, you can buy. You can still buy passes at Taco Bandito, or come down to the fair. You can still buy your Buddy Pass for twenty dollars, which is a great savings for the carnival. Um, but Taco Bandito has been been gracious to help us sell some of those passes, and you can also come down to the fair and get some of them. But yeah, it opens at five, and once it opens, the Buddy Pass, the the twenty dollar tickets. Increase in price, and we quit selling them. You have to go to the carnival and get them then. So, you know, Ryan, when you talk about the Cache County Fair and you talk about all the exhibits, you talk about all the food booths, you talk about all the happenings in the arena and everything. You know, what's your favorite part of the fair? You've been on the board for uh, I don't know how many years now, and what's your favorite part of the Cache County Fair? Probably Saturday night, about ten thirty when it's over. <laughs> <laughs> An honest man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's good. There's a lot of good people down here. I don't know. We enjoy it all. It's fun to just be a part of it. So. Well, in- honestly, Saturday night probably when it's, when all the stress is over, we can worry about next year. <laughs> well, I'm just going to say this may be your last term on the board after that comment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that wouldn't be bad either. <laughs> oh, listen, Ryan, I appreciate everything you do, and, you, and you're a straightforward, straight-shooting cowboy. I appreciate that. Have a great day at the Cache County Fair, and thank you for all you've done to help us on the program this morning. No problem. Thanks, Zeb. All right. Take care of yourself. Thanks. <laughs> I like the honesty. Ryan, I said, what's your favorite part of the fair? Oh, about Saturday night at 1030 when everything's done. Well, I'll tell you what. There's an honest, honest man, but a lot of fun at the Cassia County Fair and Rodeo this year all the way through Saturday night. Calls are welcome and appreciated. 436-2244-1866-927-4444. I'd like to have you give me a call. I'd love to hear from you, so give me a jingle, and uh, we'll talk about any subject you want. I want to talk about somebody's pounding outside my office window, and I kind of wish they'd stop that, but uh, pound away, I guess. We're going to talk a little bit about how lucky some of the people were over in Rio at the Olympics yesterday. I'll talk about that in just a moment. Hanson Mortuary at 710 6th Street in Rupert with Joel Heward, the manager, and of course his family and his staff serving you. You know, one of the things I wanted to mention this morning is that Hanson Mortuary has planned guides for you to come in and pick up. And when there's the passing of a loved one, it's really a tumultuous time for everyone. And uh, these guides will help ease everybody's stress and answer a lot of questions. So please contact Hanson Mortuary for those guides at uh, 436-5636. And remember, they are there to help you in that time of need. All you have to do is just give them a call, and they always treat you 
you with the highest ethical standards with unquestioned integrity. At Hanson Mortuary, 710 6th Street in Rupert, 436-5636. All right, your turn. Give me a call. What happened over in Rio, and I saw the video of this, and it was absolutely scary and could have killed many people. And uh, what happened was they had a great big huge television camera mounted on a cable system over one of the events and uh, it snapped the cable and came down into a very crowded area. There were some injuries, but no one was killed and it could have been absolutely devastating. That camera was up about 40 feet in the air and uh, came down. As I said, it could have been much, much worse. And uh, that happened over in the Olympics at Rio. You know, the Olympics in Rio de Janeiro, I love the Olympics. I love the Summer Olympics. I really can't get too involved in the Winter Olympics. I never have been able to really bite into that cheeseburger. But uh, the Summer Olympics with all the track and field and the swimming and everything else, I really get into. And so far, knock on wood, or like whoever's pounding outside my window, um, so far, thank the good Lord above, has not had major problems yes there have been some very serious personalized problems like what happened to ryan lochte the swimmer and his uh, fellow swimmers that were in a taxi cab the cab was stopped by would-be police that were dressed up as policemen and they were actually nothing more than low-life robbers and they stole their money and their uh, credit cards etc but I guess, and it sounds trite to say, but it happens and has happened at other Olympics. But so far, please, and I pray that it doesn't happen, there are no terrorist events or anything of any dangerous magnitude. And I pray that we can get through this Olympics without anyone being hurt, injured, or even worse. Calls are welcome, 436-224-1866-927-4587. Give me a call, please. I'd love to hear from you. Um, Let's ride. 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the world. And they're open Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. And believe me, they have the place, the place where the fun is sold. Oh, my goodness. You realize that fall is right around the corner, and they have got great, great deals on watercraft right now mm -hmm, towards the end of the season. And closeout prices on most of the 2016 four-wheelers and side-by-sides. Oh, my goodness. The new 2017 models are coming in. You'd get in there today and check it out at Let's Ride 270 Highway 24 between Rupert in the world number to call 436-4771 yes sir this is where the fun is sold all right your turn give me a call 436-2244-1866-927-4587 you know i believe that if a person has done something that is against society its rules its regulations and its laws that they pay the price in a society that has laws, and then after it's all been done and settled, whether they've gone to prison or whether they've had a huge fine to pay or whatever, let them alone. Leave them alone until possibly they fall back into their old habits or they start to be an asset to the community. And then I believe in second chances. I believe that maybe they're trying to clean up their life, and I believe they're trying to make something out of their life. Well, you know, all of us have skeletons hanging in our closet. All of us have holes in our screen door. All of us have done something or many things that we're not proud of during the course of our lives. And in the case of now Chicago Cubs relief pitcher Araldis Chapman, uh, I think he got a bum deal the other night. And he got this bum deal the other night from the DJ that plays the music at the Chicago Cubs Wrigley Field. 
What happened was, and I'm going to give you a, a quick analysis of this, but I, I thought it was disgusting when I heard about it. The DJ, when Araldus Chapman came into the game in relief uh, in the game against the St. Louis Cardinals, played a song that was absolutely inappropriate. I'm not even going to give you the title because one of the words in the title is something that I won't say on the radio. And it was in reference to Araldus Chapman being arrested for spousal abuse. And I thought it was as low class as it can be. And uh, Araldus Chapman paid his debt to society and uh, has acknowledged that what he had done was completely wrong. He's trying to make a new start. He left the Yankees, came to the Chicago Cubs. The guy can throw a fastball at 105 miles an hour. I did not make a mistake on that. 105 miles an hour plus. And to be, I don't know, embarrassed, if you will, by the song that was played by the DJ uh, is, as, is as low class as it gets. And the Cubs management fired the DJ as of this morning. He is no longer going to work the games at Wrigley Field. And Cubs president Crane Kenny said, the selection of this music, showed a lack of judgment and sensitivity to an important issue. We have terminated our relationship with the employee responsible for making the selection and will be implementing stronger controls to review and approve music before public broadcast before our games. But that doesn't really put a Band-Aid on the problem. Uh, I guess what I'm saying is that uh, all of us have, like I said a moment ago, holes in our screen door, and if we're sorry for what we've done and made our apologies to the good Lord above and to whomever we have hurt whatever, then it shouldn't be brought up, again, for public scrutiny. And in this case, I was really glad that the Cubs stepped forward and fired the DJ and hope you know today they play a lot of personalized music you know guys will go up there to hit at the plate and they'll ask the hometown music dj at the at the major ballparks well play this song it really gets me inspired it really makes me want to get up there and do a good job fine but some of the music is absolutely low or no class and this song in particular falls into that category of no class and uh, neither was the DJ having any class. And I'm glad he got fired. I'm glad he lost his job. 436-224-1866-927-4587. Don't forget, too, when you're thinking about life insurance, thinking about health insurance, retirement planning, employee benefits, please consider one name that always does such a fantastic job. And that's, of course, Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. They are dedicated. They are accessible. They're devoted to helping you for a very successful future and a protected future. Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. The number to call for an appointment is 436-4424. You get a hold of them today. In just a few minutes, we're going to have Dr. John Zamirik on our program this morning. I always look forward to having him on the show. Um, one thing that came out yesterday, and I've got a two-page report, and I want you to consider this. I'm going to talk more about it tomorrow morning in the first hour. A leaked George Soros memo. And this story was written by a person that I really trust with the Daily Caller called, uh, his name is Peter Hassan. He's written many, many uh, really investigative reports. A leaked Soros memo says the refugee crisis in Europe and now coming here is the new normal. And thanks to a lot of Soros's money, etc., gives new opportunities for global influence. Let me tell you what happened. A leaked memo from left-wing financier George Soros, Open Society Foundations, argues that Europe's refugee crisis should be accepted as the new normal 
and that the refugee crisis means new opportunities for Soros' organization to influence immigration policies on a global scale. In other words, no more borders, no more rules, no more regulatory systems, just open chaos. That is what George Soros wants. And they're calling the refugee crisis the new normal. This is, folks, think about it. No borders. You, as an American taxpayer, why should you shell out your money to support the freeloaders that are going to be coming in here en masse? Why? They can go and come as they please. And this global influence, this really bothers me. Do you really want global influence in your life as a citizen of the United States of America? I don't. Anytime I see that word global, I back up and I want to literally take my boot heel and grind it into the dirt. I don't want to lose the pride in America. I don't want to lose the pride in that flag, the red, white, and blue of the United States of America. I don't want to lose our heritage and become global. This is really worrisome to me. And much of his multi-billions is going for global influence. Scary. Uh, right now, we're going to go to the phone line, and I'm very, very honored to have a gentleman back on my program that's been here many, many times in the past, and I look forward to his conversation this morning, and that's Dr. John Zamirak. Good morning, John. How are you? Good morning. I'm fine. It's finally cooled down a little bit here in Dallas, thank God. You know, you're in Dallas, Texas, and i got to tell you that for years and years and years, I used to fly down to Dallas-Fort Worth and uh, go over to the Will Rogers Coliseum, and I announced uh, some great equine events over there in August. And I'll tell you something, August and Dallas and showers and soap, you might as well stand outside and sweat. You'd stay just as clean. Yeah, I just try not to leave the house between June and Halloween. <laughs> well, you're an honest man. Uh, Dr. John Zamirik. To an air-conditioned hotel, have dinner, and dash back in. There you go. There you go. Uh, you know, you have written an outstanding piece in the stream, and I read it in its entirety. It was very well done, but I'm just going to kind of lump it together and say this. Um, you basically are saying, and correct me if I'm wrong, that a vote for Donald Trump is a vote for self-defense. Would you agree with the way I summed it up? Yeah, and the article I wrote at stream.org is called Should Christians Vote Trump in Self-Defense? Um, I think we're past the point of, of arguing um, who is the best man for the common good for America. I think that question sort of became moot the night of the Indiana primary when Ted Cruz lost the nomination. I think now we're sort of, we're, our backs are against the wall. The state of California just tried to basically essentially close every Christian college in the state, and it took a huge fight by evangelicals to, to get a bill amended that would have stripped crucial federal funding that every state, every college gets. It would have stripped that funding from any college that practiced Christian morality. Um, for instance, that didn't allow extramarital sex in, the, in its dorms, or that wouldn't hire people in same-sex relationships to teach Christian theology. The state of California made, made the effort to close, every, or close or forcibly liberalize every Christian college in that enormous state. Um, the state of Illinois, Republican governor signed a bill forcing pro-life doctors and pregnancy centers to refer people to get abortions. Um, the left is showing it has absolutely no tolerance for Christian values, for the free exercise of religion. Um, it saves all its tolerance for Sharia Muslims. Uh, we face the, a complete breakdown of religious liberty in America. And I think we have to look at the two candidates who are likely, likely to win and say which one is less likely to persecute us. And that should be our central criterion for voting. 
I make the comparison to the Roman Empire. Um, when the, the Emperor Constantine offered, in return for Christian support, he would stop persecuting Christians. Uh, Christian leaders did not say, well, you know, but I know you're not faithful to your wife, and you did strangle your son, and you are a ruthless pagan warlord, all of which were true. They said, absolutely, where do we sign up? Because they, they realized that they were in a position of weakness. I think Christians in America don't realize they're too proud or they're too scared to accept the fact that they are in a position of profound weakness. It's not up to us to worry about the common good at this moment. We're not choosing between Richard Nixon and John F. Kennedy. We're choosing between a, a, someone who wants to use the se- full power of the secular state to liquidate the remnants of faithful Christianity in the public square and reduce us to second-class citizenship. And, on the other hand, a kind of pompous blowhard who we can't entirely trust. We can trust Hillary Clinton. She will persecute us. She is true to her word. She has the integrity to follow through on what she said and try to destroy Christianity in America. The alternative, Donald Trump, you know, might embarrass us, might might have lied to us, maybe he won't keep all of his promises, Hillary will keep all of hers, and they're all toxic. You know, let me ask you this, John, and you've been on my program many, many times. You know, I'm pretty blunt, and I appreciate your being very direct to the issues. But when you look at the poll numbers, and Hillary is ahead in some polls by 10 percentage points over Donald Trump, etc., and you look at what she's advocating, you look at her stand on various issues, why and how can the American public be this dumb or uneducated to even think about putting her in the Oval Office? I think any any of the other Republican nom- potential nominees would be far ahead of Hillary in the polls at this point. I think nominating Donald Trump was a self-inflicted wound. This is an election we should have picked up like, like, like a rock off the side of the road. We made that mistake. We have to look at what's wrong with our party. And we picked such an undisciplined candidate who, it seems, is trying to help Hillary at every turn. Every time Hillary has a scandal, Donald Trump attacks another dead soldier or a major American institution or ethnic group. Uh, it's, almost, it's almost like he's working for the Clintons. Uh, he's, he's a terrible, terrible candidate. Um, so I'm not surprised Hillary's ahead in the polls, even though she's widely regarded as despicable and cynical, even on the left. This is a matter, really, of choosing between cancer and chemotherapy. It's just we disagree over which is the cancer and which is the chemo. Yeah, but John, I've got to I've got to jump in here, and I know from past conversations with you, I think you're going to agree with me, and if not, I want to hear your reasoning. The media in this country, regardless of the candidate on the GOP side, I don't care if it was Ted Cruz, I don't care if it would have been uh, Bush, I don't care if it would have been uh, anybody. The media in this country is so far in the tank to the liberal left that anybody that would have ran on the GOP would have had the same scrutiny and the same absolute bias condition as what's going on with Trump. That's true, but as Megyn Kelly said on Fox News, why does Donald Trump have to keep helping them so abundantly every day? And it's interesting to me, the liberal media did not subject Donald Trump to this kind of scrutiny when he was seeking the nomination. They wanted him to get the nomination. They were saving all their dirt for the day after the convention. Because they wanted him in there, they thought he would be a weak candidate. I'm only answering your question about why Hillary's ahead in the polls. Right. She doesn't deserve to be. Nobody should vote for her. If I knew, I would, st- I would stop speaking to any friend who told me he was voting for Hillary Clinton. I regard her as an enemy of everything decent in America and a personal enemy and an enemy of my religion, and I urge your listeners to fight her tooth and nail. But if you ask me why, why such an awful woman is doing well on the polls, it's because Donald Trump is not a competent candidate. That's all. 
What about our society in general, though, John? I know you've studied this and you've looked at uh, how we've gone backwards in our civilized attitude uh, and our reasoning. I mean, my goodness sakes, Hillary, how did she get so popular if all of a sudden there weren't many things wrong in our society in general? Well, she's not personally popular, but her views are widespread. They've been drummed into our kids' heads in their college classrooms and from a lot of the pulpits of churches and from every tele- virtually every television network, including Fox. Fox News is conservative, but Fox TV entertainment programming is just as rotten, if not worse, than the other network. Yeah. So we've been allowing the popular culture to change people's hearts. And if you change people's hearts, their heads and their votes, eventually follow. Every every TV comedy practically has a gay character who's wise and then wonderful. Every dad in every TV show is a, is a goofball idiot whose, whose wife needs to correct his stupid mistakes. Um, the tr- 70, almost 70% of churches have never had a sermon about abortion. Uh, so, you know, there are a lot of reasons why, why we are ready to have a left-wing tyranny take power in this country. And, uh, you know, I guess you could do a similar a similar post-mortem. What happened in Venezuela? How did they end up with Hugo Chavez? We're going to, you know, 10 years from now, we may, you know, be looking over the smoking rubble and fighting over toilet paper and do a post-mortem. How did we end up with Hillary Clinton? Absolutely. We have a caller with a question, John. Go ahead, caller. Quickly, you're on the air. Yes, um... You know, as far as the election and Trump, um, it's been said numerous times on, you know, TV, radio, that they have literally thrown everything at him. I don't know that they have anything left to throw at him. And, uh, you know, they, they kind of, you know, I think he is, in some cases, where they've, uh, you know, over, whatever. The statements that Trump has made have been, have been embellished by the, liberal media, but you really wonder if the common people out here really care that much about what Trump has really said. But you've got the people that are going to vote for Trump, and then you've got the independents, and that's where we need to be, you know. What's the status? Do you think that they will come around? I'll hang up. Uh, John, respond to that if you would, please. I think if Donald Trump were to impose some discipline on his mouth and start attacking Hillary Clinton's many, many weaknesses, her personal corruption, her deep ties to Islamists in Saudi Saudi Arabia, her her ruthlessness towards Bernie Sanders, her her recklessness with with classified emails, her lying to the the parents of, of murdered Americans from Benghazi and having an innocent Coptic Christian American filmmaker arrested, blaming him for what she knew was an Al-Qaeda attack. I mean, Hillary Clinton really ought to be languishing in a state or federal prison somewhere. If Donald Trump could get could stop talking about Ted Cruz's father and Megyn Kelly and all the personal grudges he has left over from the primary campaign, and could focus on the, the woman he's actually running against and just start relentlessly attacking her, he might be able to pull this thing off. I hope he does. John, let me ask you this. Uh, Yesterday, and with great scrutiny, I listened, watched, and took notes on the speech that Donald Trump gave in Ohio regarding our national security and also our protection uh, that we need in this country against the refugees that are not being vetted and also Islamic terror. I thought, now I'm going to tell you what I thought about his speech. I thought it was the best speech he ever had given. I thought it was in subdued tones. I thought it was very eloquent. And I thought it was very direct. And I think more of that needs to come from Donald Trump. That being said, he's got less than three months to put this together. Can he do it? I think if Donald Trump is willing to read what is on the teleprompter and stay off of Twitter... He could he could pull this off. If he's going to if he's going to continue to run as a reality TV star and wrestling announcer, he's not going to pull it off. I think it's entirely up to him. This election is his to lose, and he so far he's losing it. 
You made this statement a few moments ago, and I'd like you to elaborate on that and maybe even scare to reality my audience out there that might be leaning to the liberal side, which I doubt there's that many. But you used the phrase left-wing tyranny. I just wonder if not only here in southern Idaho and across the United States in general, people are just like sponges. They're absorbing this left-wing tyranny, and they don't care anymore about the values of our country and its heritage. What are your thoughts? Well, they may not realize how much they're threatened. They may be taking them for granted. It's easy to take your freedom for granted. Uh, How about this? Imagine if half the churches in your city had to close. That is one of the things we face. Because Obama, if you remember, before the same-sex marriage decision, Justice Alito asked Obama's leading litigator, uh, the Solicitor General of the United States, the number two law enforcement officer in the country, whether churches that refuse to perform same-sex marriages or hire a clergy in same-sex marriages would lose their tax exemption. And he said yes. That they will be treated essentially like white supremacists. So, Every Southern Baptist church, every Mormon church, every Catholic church, every Orthodox synagogue, theoretically every mosque, though I don't think that they will be affected, I think they'll be exempted somehow, every one of those will lose their tax exemption and they will have to be run, they will have to be run for profit like a casino or a Nevada brothel. They will have to pay business tax. They will go broke. Every donation you make to your church will not be taxed up deductible. It will be like you spend it on poker chips. That will happen. Obama was willing to, t- to say that with, when he was a lame duck president with a Republican Congress to a divided Supreme Court. Imagine if Hillary Clinton, if she maybe even carries the Senate uh, or devastates us in the House, in her first hundred days, as a victorious candidate was four years ahead of her, she's already said American Christians need to be re-educated and change their values so that they can accept abortion on demand through nine months of pregnancy. She's already said similar things about homosexual relationships. So imagine every second church you pass on the road with a for sale sign on it. That's what happened if Hillary wins. All right, then the obvious question at this juncture in our conversation would be, is it too late, 90 days, three months till the election, and all this dissension, all this absolute fragmentation of the party, etc., can they piece this thing together in your opinion? I don't know. I certainly hope so. I, I, it's something to pray about. Uh, will America's unique experiment in ordered liberty freedom of religion, individualism, the family, will that experiment be consigned to the dustbin of history? We're about to find out. You know, the last sentence of your letter that you had written in uh, the stream, the article, really hit me hard, and I'm just going to read a part of it. It says, the spayed and neutered Christians, they, meaning the left, have thoughtfully declawed so they can keep us as household pets. Explain that, please. Sure. There are churches, like the Episcopal Church and the United Methodist Church, that are branches of it anyway, that are caving. They're doing same-sex weddings. They're counseling, they're, they're referring for abortion. Some of them are involved in keeping abortion legal. They're surrendering to the culture. They're a lot like the, those uh, patriotic churches in China that work with the communist government to help keep Christians under control. Churches like that that are willing to sell their souls in return for a little bit of gold for Caesar, they're willing to burn incense in front of the emperor, they will survive for one generation. But in China, all the people of faith are worshiping in underground churches in their houses, in illegal churches that are persecuted by the government. And the people who show up at the official approved churches the the churches like the ones that will keep their tax exemptions in Hillary's America, those are hollow churches. They're not really Christian. 
to, to a large degree. They're sold out. They're collaborators. No one respects them. They're, you know, the dying mainline Protestant churches, the dying Jesuit Catholic universities, all these places where Christianity has been watered down to homeopathic doses and turned into a, like a little satchel of potpourri to make the, the lobby of the abortion clinic smell a little better. These churches are dead. They've sold their soul. Soon enough, they'll just be shoved aside and forgotten. And whatever happens politically, the real Christians will persevere. But I hope it doesn't have to be under such ugly circumstances as the Christians in China and in Iraq and in Turkey are enduring. But we see Christ did not promise us a comfortable life. And if we poison our own garden, we're going to have to live with it. John, I look forward to having you on the air every time you have the availability. Dr. John Zamirak and uh, Rights for the Stream, thank you so much for being on the program this morning, and please come back soon. Thank you, I will. All right, sir, thank you much. Wow, very, very interesting man right there. And the piece that he had written for the stream is called, Should Christians Vote Trump in Self-Defense? Don't be too scrupulous to consider it. Very interesting piece. Oh, my. <clears throat> We've got to get a weather forecast on here right now. And the weather is brought to you by one of our new sponsors of the weather. And we started with them yesterday. Pope Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, and Company CPAs. Now, it's really important that you find a CPA, someone that you can trust, somebody that you can really share all the information with, somebody that can help you and listen to you and explain things to you. And that's what Deanne and I found by going to their firm, Pope Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin & Company in Burley and Rupert. I mean, they absolutely know what they're doing, and they can share the information in a very, very uh, transparent manner so that you know where you are and where you should be. I love that kind of approach. They've got offices at 710 Overland in Burley and 625th Street in Rupert. Call them today, make an appointment, and work with the professionals. And they've been providing accounting services to the Minicasha area for well over 50 years. Pope Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin & Company in Rupert and Burley. And right now, here's Gina with the, bur with the weather. <laughs> Here's your weather forecast for this Tuesday, August 16th. It's going to be a nice day, but a little on the warm side, which is going to remain that way at least until we get towards the weekend. Sunny skies for today. Expect a high of 93. Tonight, low of 56. Tomorrow, mostly sunny skies. High of 91 with an overnight low of 58. Looks like the wind's going to be picking up as we move through the week as well. Steady winds out of the west for today, out of the southeast, right around 5 miles an hour. Tomorrow, kicking up to about 7 for Thursday, partly cloudy, high of 90 winds on the southwest, right around 10 miles an hour. Then for Friday, the winds are going to be dropping the temperatures down quite a bit. It's going to be windy out of the northwest, right around 15 miles an hour. Mostly sunny skies, but only going to see a high of 71 as we get on into the weekend. Looks like it's going to be slightly breezy, and highs are going to be in the upper 70s to low 80s. Yesterday's high was 89. The overnight low was 53. That is your weather for Zebeth Ranch. Oh, my goodness. Very, very good weather forecast, Gina. And it's brought to you this hour by folks that I trust, and you will too. Pope Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, and Company, CPAs, and they include Curtis Pope, Todd Phillips, Rob Oaks, Mitch Goodwin, Heather Daly, and Lydon Crane. Really good folks serving you. You contact them them today with offices in Rupert and Burley. Well, let's see what else have we got cooking here. I've got time for a couple of phone calls. Come on, folks. We've had a really interesting program with a lot of good guests here this morning so far, and I'd like you to give us a jingle at 436 22 927 4587 Give us a call. Uh, the Gooding County Fair and Pro Rodeo going on this week. Oh, my goodness. Don Gill and the crew over there, they really put on a good pro rodeo. It's going to be a dandy Thursday, Friday on Saturday night, and of course Friday night, tough enough to wear pink night. Oh, I better back up to Thursday. Thursday night's family night at the rodeo. And don't forget, too, at the end of the rodeo, they have something really unique, the Garage Boys Band in shoot number seven. Ooh, hoo, hoo. 
<laughs> Can they play and pick and grin? It's good. It's fun. Friday night, tough enough to wear pink night. And then Saturday night, of course, uh, they're going to have all kinds of fun with the great bullfighters only after the last bull's been bucked out along again with the Garage Boys Band. All of this and more at the Gooding County Fair and Pro Rodeo for 2016. You get on over there and enjoy. All right. Calls are welcome and appreciated. 436-2244-1866-927-4587. What is wrong? What is wrong with what Trump said yesterday about calling for extreme vetting of immigration applicants to come into this country? All the Democrats did backflips. Hillary was in her uh, one of her many ugly pantsuits, just oh, railing against Trump. And Vice President Joe Biden, he made a statement that absolutely was really stupid to me. Biden called Trump's views dangerous and un-American. Now, if you've got somebody that is railing about extreme vetting, to make sure that our country is safe and making sure that we don't get all the sleaze and the problems here that want to do us harm. And Vice President Biden calls Trump's views dangerous and un-American. Who really is being un-American? I'm really sick and tired of the liberal left in this country getting all the press on a positive nature And what the right and conservative right wants is always being denigrated. And I do believe that what Trump said yesterday about extreme vetting is very important. I do believe that we should have extreme vetting for every refugee that comes into this area. I want to know who they are. I want the I's dotted and the T's crossed. And you're a fool if you don't want that. We don't know who these people are. We don't know what their intent is. And quite frankly, I'd like to know that they want to stand tall and proud looking up at the red, white, and blue of the United States of America. That's what I want. I don't want anything less. But I want to know who they are. And if they are in favor of something like Sharia law, I want them weeded out. Go back home. Stay in your own home country. Our Constitution, thank you, is the best ever written for any country in the world. And we're certainly not going to change anything for you. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Well, Zeb, you know, uh, I've told you examples of how refugees have been rude to my wife and then uh, my nephew. Is a long haul truck driver. His parents went to buy me, so he pulls into my yard where I've got room to park his truck when he's got time, and he goes and spends time with his family. And he told me, in a derogatory term, how terribly disrespectful and rude, and, and even on the road, these uh, Muslim truck drivers are. And he says they are. Well, my other, well, I can't even say it works. You, you, you throw me up there. But he says, they, they're the worst. And he says, there just seems to be more and more and more of them. And, uh, you know, if you think about the access that these truck drivers have to various places in our country that are very vulnerable, and that's just one part of this. Yeah. I, I don't understand... And I I really have done a lot of research on this and study on this, or I wouldn't be on this radio program, but I do not understand something so simplistic as to why our government is catering, bending over backwards, and making sure that we pave the road for the Muslim influence in this country, whether it's with the Muslim Brotherhood, with this administration, whether it's Uma Abedin that works for Hillary Clinton. I don't know why, Randy, but we're paving a yellow brick road for these folks and their ideology and I'm absolutely scared. So I'll tell you what. When everybody says, well, Trump could pull it out, and I say, maybe it isn't as bad as all that. i got to run to the news. I said before on this program, when you walk into the voting booth, you, you say your friends are all for Trump. When you're in there, you stop and think about everything he says 
and you say to yourself, and you vote for him and maybe never admit it. You know, yeah. maybe, I don't know, Zeb. I got to run to the news, Randy, but I'm running. I'm running late, Randy. I got to run to the news, buddy. I appreciate it. I don't mean to be rude to you. Have a great day. Thank you. Yeah, I got to zip uh, to the news. Doctor History's coming up right after the news. Don't go away. I'll be right back. Oh my! I had to be retrained during that break. I couldn't remember how to turn the microphone back on. Morning, everybody's up at the ranch, and of course, uh, I'm Zeb Bell with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you, and along with some of our great advertisers like, of course, Western Way Services, always at your disposal, 734-6969. We're going to get our guest and our segment started in a moment. Don't forget the Cache County Fair off and running for this week, and of course, Dr. History is going to bring me some uh, maple bars with uh, bacon on top but uh, you be sure and stop over and enjoy the fair enjoy the exhibits enjoy the entertainment enjoy the paramutual horse races enjoy the ram rodeo on thursday friday and saturday night enjoy the stock sale enjoy everything about your cashy county fair and rodeo all this week at the cashy county fairgrounds in burley You know, I miss those maple bars, and I miss my buddy bringing them up like uh, 30 in a box, and then he made the mistake that one year bringing them up when the Bulldoggers were paying their entry fees, and I got one out of the 30. Good morning, Dr. Isker. Good morning, Zeb. How are you? Great. It's a great week. The the Olympics, the fair, I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. You know, uh, and thank God, did you see that camera that had fallen 40 feet and just missed killing a bunch of people yeah wow yep we are brought to you by of course some really really nice people and that is of course minicasha sales at 1321 east main street in burley zach and the whole crew nice nice people and uh, they can help you with all your doors all your windows with all your roofing material everything at minicasha sales 1321 east main street in burley bringing you dr history and now without further ado here the man hey <laughs> All right, Zeb. Uh, I just I got a question for you. This is a little quiz. Oh, now you're gonna try to paint me in the corner, well, are you? We'll try. I never have yet. I uh, know. I know. <laughs> so, if you think of occupations in the Old West, okay, there are a lot of occupations that you could get by just doing a mediocre job, but there's some occupations in the Old West that you had better be good at, or it could be fatal. Okay, I would say, not necessarily in this order, but being a town sheriff or marshal. Okay. Or, and this might sound a little funny to you, but if you're going to be a gambler, you better darn sure be a good gambler. Okay, you, you haven't hit it yet. Um, maybe, I don't know, maybe a doctor. Nope. <laughs> All right. Okay. I'm, uh, uh, hold on a second. Okay. Doctor, uh, gunfighter. Okay, you're getting closer. Okay, uh, go ahead, tell me. Bank robber. I really didn't have any <laughs> intentions of going there. <laughs> all right. Okay. If you're not a good bank robber, eh, things could turn out very bad. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So, okay, we're going to go to the town of Meeker, Colorado. Uh oh. Okay, located in the northwestern part of the state, about 75 miles from kind of a rugged area known as Browns Park. Yeah. Okay. So, in the 1890s, Browns Park was notorious as the hideout of the Wild Bunch. Uh huh. Of course, the famous outlaw gang led by Butch Cassidy, and you know, by all accounts butch was this charming guy uh and after his gang pulled off a very successful robbery of the bank in montpelier idaho in the summer of 1896 it was natural that butch would pretty much brag about the holdup and to the members of the gang who hadn't been there he you know really built it up said how easy it was it was no problem and uh anyway so a colorful guy like butch drew a lot of admirers to him Now, several of these novice members of the Wild Bunch, after sitting around the campfire, listening to Butch brag about the Montpelier robbery, decided, hey, we can do that. We're going to pull off a bank robbery Mm -hmm. by ourselves. Okay. So, after all, they must have reasoned uh, when it came to bank robbery, they had learned from the master, Butch Cassidy. So, there's no reason they couldn't knock off a bank on their own, right? 
<laughs> you know, it seems to me like a lot of these guys in the Old West, had they kept their big mouth shut, they would have been a lot better off. <laughs> or stuck with the master. Yeah, there okay. you go. So, probably after talking to, uh, about it among themselves for a while, three of these less experienced members of the Wild Bunch rode off towards Meeker, Colorado. Less experienced. Less experienced. Three guys, George Law, Jim Shirley, and a young guy they called the kid, and they think his name might have been Pierce. Okay, so these are the three guys. Okay. George Law, Jim Shirley, and the kid. Okay, their plan was to pull off this job just like Butch Cassidy would have. They got their hands on some extra horses, stashed them several miles out of town so they could change to fresh mounts for their getaway, which, of course, that was Butch's uh, motive. You know, you get out their ways, get fresh horses, and then you can outrun the posse. So, they rode into Meeker on the morning of Tuesday, October 13th, 1896. They familiarized themselves with the layout of the town and the bank. That was their intended target. So, they were just kind of hanging around the local livery stable, just not doing much, just kind of watching. So, if anyone in Meeker was suspicious of these three strangers, no record of it has come down through history. So... More than likely, you know, Western hospitality dictated they would be welcome. They'd probably sit around and just shoot the bull with uh, some of the local town people. I mean, you you wouldn't think these guys are going to do anything bad. Yeah, well, you know, most of these guys were about as bright as a burned-out light bulb, and it surprises me they didn't say, well, we're in town to rob a bank. <laughs> yeah, yeah, where's your bank, and where's the, uh, where's the back door? Yeah. You know, but anyway, the three outlaws had their eyes on the bank of Meeker, which was owned by a company called the Hugus Company, Uh and it was a business enterprise that operated a number of banks and mercantiles in Colorado and Wyoming. Now, the bank, uh, this is a little different. The bank was housed in the Hugus building on Meeker's Main Street. Now, a Hugus general store also occupied the same building. So the bank and the mercantile store were in the same Oh, building. wait a minute. Where they sold the dry goods and, right. and the yeah. grain and the clothing and yeah. everything, kind Guns, of the general everything. store type thing? Right. The bank was in there? Yeah. They were all kind in, of like a mall. Yeah. First yeah. of the mall shopping. Yep. So that afternoon, still acting unsuspiciously, George Law and the kid wandered apparently kind of aimlessly into the bank slash store yeah. while Jim Shirley came in through the back door. Okay. Now they split up even more. George Law heading towards the left where the bank counter was located, while the kid went to the right, and Jim Shirley advanced into the center of the room. Now, at the counter was a guy named Joe Rooney, who was a clerk at the Meeker Hotel, and he was making a deposit. And at this point, let's take a break. Oh, you're going to have one of those Saturday morning cliffhangers. You bet. you got to find out what happens to oh, Joe Rooney. Oh, my goodness, ladies and gentlemen. This cliffhanger, this cereal of Western times, is brought to you by Minicasha Sales. 1321 East Main Street in Burley. Zach and the whole crew. You know, one thing i got to mention to you, they've got the very best of the Tartar Farm and Ranch gates and panels. you got cattle. you got horses. They've got the gates and panels right there through Tartar, the very best. And don't forget, too, all of your windows. Windows with the Western Windows save on your heating and cooling bills. You check it out today. Minicasha Sales, 1321 East Main Street in Burley with Zach and the whole crew right across from the airport. And they sponsor this man, this man, Dr. History, who has us now in a cliffhanger. All right. So keep in mind the names. Okay, George Law and Jim Shirley and the kid are the outlaws. Yep. Okay. Joe Rooney is going to make a deposit, so he's standing in line. Well, George Law calmly stood in line behind Rooney as if he was going to conduct some kind of normal business or deposit or, in this case, withdrawal. But uh, when Rooney finished making his deposit and turned to leave, Law went into action, drew his gun, and he stepped up to the counter, and he thrust the weapon through the teller's window. He ordered the man to put his hands up. Mm -hmm. Now... Uh, just to make his point, which is uh, kind of again kind of a not a very good experience, he sh- he fired a shot past the teller's head. Past. 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 Now you're robbing a bank and you shoot your gun. Okay, now wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're going too fast for this old cowboy. That is going to cause alarm and awareness, <laughs> you, is it not? You and I would know that. Yeah. Okay, the teller, a guy named David Smith, who was the bank's assistant cashier, didn't follow the order quickly enough to suit law, so amazingly, he fired again. Wait a minute, wait a minute. This is two shots. Two shots now. Okay. okay. Sending a slug whistling past Smith's 
other ear. Uh-huh. Now, so he was kind of boxed in. He was. So if the idea was to rob the bank without arouse, arousing attention of the rest of the town, the outlaws were in the process of failing miserably. Okay, now, so these old cults in the old days, I mean, they weren't exactly like ping or no. bang. I mean, you're talking bang. Wow. Yeah. You could hear, I'm going to guess, a few yeah. blocks away. So yeah. two gunshots going off in the bank were bound to cause a bit of a, a stir, right? One would think. <laughs> well, some say that the shots were accidental, that Law was so nervous he fired them without meaning to. But, you know, it's impossible to really know at this point what happened. Uh, but anyway, the shots kind of alerted the town, as you can imagine. Okay, so inside the bank, Jim Shirley and the kid threw down on a guy named Moulton, who was the manager, and some of the other employers or employees. And they were holding them at gunpoint. Now, while Law kept an eye on Smith, who's behind the counter, yeah. and Rooney, the guy that had made the deposit, yeah. they still stood nearby with their hands up, and he tried to open the door of the bank office. The door was locked. He wouldn't budge. So Shirley or- ordered Moulton to unlock the door. So the bank manager cooperated. He produced a key, opened the office door. Law crowded into the room, pulled out uh, the cash drawer, and yanking a crumpled sugar sack sack from his pocket, he dumped the cash from the drawer into the sack. Now, wait a minute. Okay, so we've got a white sack full of cash. White sack full of cash. And and this is taking a lot of time. (laughs) That's that's you're right on with this, right where I'm going. Okay, so while he's busy doing that, Shirley made sure all the prisoners were disarmed, and also now this is kind of interesting. He broke the actions of all the rifles in the mercantile store uh-huh. that was right there in the same building. So he goes next door and breaks all the actions of guns that are on the shelf. Well, but this is all in one room. Oh, really? Yeah, it's all okay. the, the bank and the and the mercantile. It's all like one big room. Big, friendly atmosphere. Yeah, so he's broken all the rifles for whatever reason. Yeah. Anyway, so, and as you mentioned, all this was taking way too much time. Okay, the earlier shots had alerted the townspeople that something was wrong at the bank. Yeah. Okay, so a guy named Tom Shervin, who worked at the Meeker Hotel with Joe Rooney, ran down the board, boardwalk, peeked in the windows to see what was going on, <laughs> spotting the hostages with their hands up, Shervin leaped to the obvious conclusion that the place was being robbed. Boy, I'm telling you now, you're, you're talking about some really sharp people. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so he signaled as much to a man passing the street who dashed away to spread the word. Well, by the time Shirley, Law, and the kid finished their work inside the bank, again, I, I don't know how much time this took. But I mean, like, we started this on a Tuesday, and it's already Wednesday <laughs> afternoon. Yeah. So here we are. They're inside the bank. A group of armed men led by the town marshal now, Uh-oh. guy named Ben Nichols, had surrounded the entrance to the building using whatever cover they could find as they leveled rifles and shotguns at the door. Yeah. So they're outside hiding behind wagons or barrels or whatever. This doesn't sound good. Not for the outlaws. Not the bad guys. Okay, Jim Shirley actually was the oldest and most experienced of the bandits. Wait a minute, most experienced? <laughs> Boy, it seems to me he should have been more vocal. He should have been. <laughs> so he knew trouble was likely waiting for them outside. Their best chance to escape would be to take hostages with them to serve as human shields. This doesn't sound good. No. So Shirley grabbed Joe Rooney, jammed a gun in his back, and forced him out the door onto the sidewalk. Yeah. Now, seeing one of their fellow Meekerites in the lead, the townsmen held their fire as the outlaws and their prisoners pushed out of the bank. And as you can imagine, it was a bit tense well, for everybody. I, I think that's good yeah. terminology. And it became even more so as Jim Shirley spotted a man with a rifle crouched at the corner of a nearby grain warehouse. Shirley snapped a shot at the man, hit him in the chest, and wounding him, but it didn't fatally. He was okay. Shot him in the chest and it didn't yeah. kill him? It must have been off to the side or something. I don't know. Missed his heart. Oh. So he was okay. So there's one shot. But anyway, so given the circumstances, that shot could have been the max that touched off an explosion Uh-oh. of gunfire. I mean, it could have just oh my. all been bad. But yeah. anyway, if that had happened, there would have been a massacre on Meeker's Main Street. Some or all the hostages probably would have been killed. Yeah. Somehow the townsmen managed to keep their cool and keep their nerves, and they held their fire. So picture this. The group of hostages began shuffling down the street, herded, by Shirley, Law, and the kid. Okay, so we so, got hostages going down the street. street with these three outlaws kind of around them, kind of shuffling them down the street. Okay. So their destination was a wagon uh, that actually belonged to the Hugus Company that was parked alongside the boardwalk. 
the outlaw's horses were tied to the wheels of this wagon. Uh, you so know, that's where some, they were headed. I see some bad things coming. Okay. Well, when they got there, Law and Shirley started jerking the reins loose while a kid covered the prisoners with his rifle. Okay. Now, Zeb, you and I have been around horses. Yeah. You jerk the reins on a horse, they're not just going to stand there. No, so, and we're talking about being under a duress situation right, here. yeah. So suddenly, one of the hostages, impossible to say which one at this time, couldn't stand it any longer. The man lowered his arms and broke from the group, dashing for safety. Uh-huh. Now, that unexpected development caused the kid's nerve to crack. He was the youngest, yeah. most inexperienced. And what did he do? Well, the young outlaw opened fire. On the guy. Uh, spraying lead at the hostages as fast as he could what? work the lever on his gun. Oh, my goodness, this kid. Oh. <laughs> well, naturally enough, when the shooting started, the rest of the hostages, they also just took off. They spread out. Yeah, took would, off. wouldn't sure. you? Oh, yeah. So trying to get out of the way of the flying lead, uh, and actually one man was hit in the arm, another in the leg, and a third had a finger grazed by a bullet. But despite their injuries, the hostages kept moving. Really? And suddenly the three outlaws found themselves without human shields. This kid was not a very good shot. No. Uh, he had not he gone just, through a hunter safety course or no, anything, right? Uh, that was uh, We would call it buck fever if yeah. you were hunting deer. Okay, but. right. Well, guns roared all around them as the citizens of Meeker opened up with all the barrels blazing. So all these people are still laying yeah, in wait. Right. They're hiding behind wagons and barrels and behind buildings. And these three crooks, now they don't have any human no, shields. They're standing beside this wagon trying to get their horses. Yeah. Well, the kid was thrown backward. His body ripped through by five bullets. One of them found his heart, killed him instantly. Jim Shirley stumbled against the wagon, shot through the lungs. He managed to lift his gun and jerk the trigger a few times. Even as he hit the ground, he was still pulling the trigger a yeah, few times. Yeah. Now, George Law was the only one still on his feet. Now, George was the experienced one. Uh, yeah. I think no, so. No, no, Jim Shirley was the only one. I see. Okay. So, George Law was the only one still on his feet. Now, instead of trying to get on one of the spooked horses, as I mentioned, he took off on foot. <laughs> mm, not bright. Okay. Now, he had to have known that his odds were not really good about getting away, but he did his best. He hadn't gone far, though, before he stumbled, shot through the body. A second later, a slug smashed into his left leg, knocked it out from under him, and he tumbled to the ground. Well, slowly the armed townsmen began to emerge from their hiding places, and they kind of cautiously approached these guys. I mean, they didn't know for sure that they were dead. Yeah. And Now, did all three die right then? Uh, the t Jim, Shirley, and the kid were dead. Okay, but, right the other, the but old Law was still he running. He was still alive, yeah. but obviously in bad shape. Yeah, I would say. So, uh, mortally wounded. But the county attorney and the editor of the local newspaper tried to get a dying statement out of him. But all Law managed to do was give them phony names for himself and the others. Now, why at that point would he want to do that? You know, here you are. You, you, you you've think, about I'm had dying. it. Yeah. Hey, this is my name. So, Shirley and the kid, uh, anyway, it was only later that their real identities were discovered. Uh, Law lived for less than an hour after the shootout yeah. that ended this box. And I group. don't suppose they offered a lot of medical attention. <laughs> Probably not, you know. But, you know, oddly enough, when the bank employees returned to the bank, they found the sack of money still sitting there. In the bank? Yeah, in the excitement of herding the hostages out of the bank, the outlaws had left the money behind. Oh, Again, uh, you know, it, you know, and even if they'd gotten away, they would have done so empty-handed because they didn't have the money. So they'd bungled this bank robbery up one way and down the other, and when it came to following the footsteps of their good hero, Butch Cassidy and the Wild Bunch, these guys never had a chance. You know, and the old adage, crime doesn't pay. Well, they didn't have the money. No, they didn't. <laughs> and, you know, again, going into a bank robbery thinking, oh, well, Butch Cassidy did it. We'll do it the same way he did it. Uh, no. I'm no. surprised they didn't do it like Butch and Sundance did with that train when they used dynamite. Oh, yeah. Yeah, kind of blow it to bits. Yeah. And then old Sundance looks at Butch and says, uh, use enough dynamite there, Butch. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a number of uh, bungled uh, robberies that took place. I remember one that took place. A stagecoach pulled up a, a man and a woman, and uh, this was in the evening, and they took off with the goods. But they got lost, and they wandered around in all night long, and the next morning they'd only 
gone a mile or so so they got caught oh my the dumbest thing i ever heard of any of the stories that you have related about the old west and we've seen this in hollywood movies is where a bank robber will jump out on the tracks of a oncoming train hold his gun up and say stop (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) i I agree with you that's a little bit of a okay oh my goodness to stop a train i don't know where you find some of these stories but Really, when you think about it, it's amazing that we progressed from being so stupid. <laughs> and, you know, I, and I've told, told a lot of stories about robbers. And, yeah. you know, some of them were uh, like gentleman robbers. They were very kind and well, nice. There's a guy that, uh, wasn't he from Idaho or California see, or something? Yeah. That, uh, I'd have to look at it. Was it, it was Black, Black Bart? I'm thinking it was Black Bart. Black they Bart, called yeah. the gentleman. Yeah. yeah I'd have yeah. to check on that. But And then he met his demise. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They uh, they, they used, didn't have very good job security. They they usually did. Lost. They have four hundred one k plans or anything. <laughs> I don't think they did. Okay. I think it was four hundred one. Get out of the country. <laughs> <laughs> Leave the country. Oh, man. Like maybe Butch did. We don't know. Yeah. We keep talking about that Do you one. believe he got uh, the hail of bullets over in Bolivia, or did he come back to New York? There yeah. are people that still think he came back to New York. And I lean that direction. I, do I really do, just because of some of the things I've read. And the family members. Right. Some of the letters. And friends. Yeah. And I think I told you a couple of years ago, I met a man, shook his hand, that shook the hand of Butch Cassidy. Yeah. Down in St. George, Utah. Yeah. He was like 96 years old. And who's to say that maybe your neighbor isn't a direct descendant and they had uh, maybe an ice cream social you gotta, together? you got to be careful who you talk about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Minicasha Sales, 1321 East Main Street in Burley, right across from the airport. And it's true. Zach actually knew Butch Cassidy and the Sundance get. No, I'm kidding. Anyway, you stop in for all your lumber and all your shingles and your Tartar Farm and Ranch gates and panels, everything right there at Minicasha Sales, 1321 East Main Street in Burley, right across from the airport, was Zach and the crew sponsoring Dr. History. Quick question. I see you got your uh, Bronco cap on. Now, is that for the Denver Broncos or the Boise Boise State? And I like the Denver Broncos. You know what, though? I think that Boise State is going to be a lot bigger and more powerful than what people give them credit for this year. You know, I love watching them because they always seem to come back with a good bunch every year. This quarterback now, after a year's maturity, I think is going to be really outstanding. And they've made some real changes for the better in the offensive line. They're going to be fun to watch. They're going to be fun to watch. Yeah. 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 And I think last year, you know, every team has its dips and its highs. Highlights, but I think Boise State's going to be tough this year. Yeah, they'll, they'll be fun to watch. All right, yeah. so now is it true you're going to offer me your tickets to go up some weekend? <laughs> Just as soon as I buy them. Oh, you haven't got <laughs> yours yet, huh? No, uh, how's the wife? Doing good, doing good. Good. Yeah, we're... Uh Everything's going good. Like I say, we're going to hit the rodeo and, or the parade tomorrow tomorrow at Burley. And is there any chance at all that maybe some of the human kindness will come out in you and you'll bring me some of the maple bars with bacon? Not a chance. Okay. Okay. <laughs> You're excused. I may get one, but I don't know if I'm going to share it with you. I doubt it. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. History. God bless and thanks for coming you have in. have a good day, sir. All right, my friend. Thank you very much. Dr. History, better known as my dear friend, Dr. Ken Turner, and uh, we appreciate him being on the program here this morning. want to remind you about some of our great Cache County Fair and Rodeo merchants, including, of course, our dear friends at Magic Valley Irrigation. 44 East, 500 South of Burnley, and Jeff and the whole crew at Magic Valley Irrigation would like to thank all the farmers for a great job, and they're offering irrigation system service and repair since 1978. Magic Valley Irrigation. AMI, 719 Overland and Burnley, and you know I love looking at that big 28-foot ranch over the door and you'll go nuts over their bolts and believe me they urge you to attend the Cache County Fair and Rodeo along with K&R Rental 256 South 600 West of Hayburn hey locally owned they've got everything forklifts compressors pivots tractors for landscaping everything you need at K&R Rental in Hayburn we're going to take a little break and go to our main studio I'll be back in three minutes and now, back to Zeb at the Ranch on AM 1230 KBAR. To reach Zeb, call 436-2244 or toll-free 1-866-927-4587. And now, here is Zeb. Oh, 
Joel, thank you, thank you, thank you. And right now I also want to remind you that on Thursdays we have a special segment called School Days in Cassia County, and it's sponsored by A Child's World at 1308 Overland and Burley with school clothes aplenty. Oh, my goodness, hundreds and hundreds of school clothes, and you can save money. And don't forget, too, if you got somebody's birthday coming up, they've got games and toys and puzzles and all kinds of neat things. And gift wrapping is always free at A Child's World, 1308 Overland in Burley. Also, the Ambulatory Surgery Center, the only place in southern Idaho for glaucoma surgery, with also life-saving colonoscopies. Mm -hmm. You better check it out. Save money and make sure your health is preserved. You give them a call at Ambulatory Surgery Center, 1344 Highland in Burley. The number, 677-8888. Well, look who I found wandering down the streets and we welcomed them in for a little bit this morning it looks like a grandfather and his grandson hello grandpa how are you good morning mr. Bell how are you George mass my old buddy what are you doing here this morning well I've got a very proud moment uh, I'll tell a little story first when I come back from Boise Adam Fowler my grandson 12 years old, went to Boise with me to testify, get flag at half staff. Yeah. On the way home, he says, Grandpa, he says, we need to get flag, flag education in school. Okay. I let it set for a couple minutes. I turned around him. I said, no, we don't. He looked at me just bewildered, and I says, honey, you need to do it. Yeah. And he got a hold of Senator State, Idaho State Senator Kelly Anthon, and it's their project. They got it done. Okay, now flag education. George, I need you to get real close to that microphone. Uh, flag education. What do you mean, flag education? Don't we know everything about the flag? Well, you and I probably do, but this younger generation coming up don't. Uh, I've had the opportunity to speak with children in school. They're hungry to learn, and uh, they just don't teach it, flag education. Why don't they teach it? Why aren't they concerned about it? Why is it not being done? The story I get all the time, we don't have time. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Time? Does it take that long? No, no. Just the basics on flag education is very minimal. I'm going to say you can take uh, 15, 20 hours, and you can learn every, the basics of the flag. It takes longer than that to learn everything. So during the course of a school year, if they devoted, they being the school and the, whether it's a history class or whatever, if they devoted five minutes a week, they could get the job done. Yes. You know, uh, Zeb, uh, we, all you need to teach them is proper care for it how it should be uh, displayed and, and hung and this yeah. type of stuff. It's, it's real simple. It's, a, it's respect, and it's also a real uh, kind of a remembrance of what our forefathers lived and died to give to us. That is true. Uh, speaking as a veteran, uh, the flag is very sacred to us. Yep. I've lost a lot of friends that's died for it. I have, too. And so it, it stands for freedom and people to give their lives, and they're still giving their lives. For and, and you know what really irritates me? And I, if somebody's offended by this in the various school districts, that's your problem, not mine. Uh, finding time of maybe five minutes a week to teach flag education and basically uh, a remembrance and an honoring of our country, that seems very minimal. It does. Uh, I've been working with uh, Cassia County and Mendoka County. Uh, Mendoka County is coming up with a real good program that they're, I haven't seen it yet, but they're going to take it from kindergarten to through the 12th. Okay, now i got to talk to this young man over there. Uh, I've known you ever since you were about the size of a puppy. How come you grew up so fast? Well, I couldn't choose that I grew up, so I can't answer. Now, you're going to be how? Uh, what grade of school are you going into? I'm going into seventh grade. Seventh grade? And how old are you now? I am 12. 12 years old. Adam Fowler, do you mind if I read this letter that you had written to Senator Kelly Anthon? No, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Now, this is all your words. Grandpa didn't help you, right? No, Grandpa did not help me. He oh. said I didn't do an auto-collective, but that was it. Okay, Adam, I'm going to read this. This is your letter, your words. It says, Senator Kelly Anthon, Senator... Would you please draft a bill to bring teaching of the United States flag back to our schools? I am willing to support and testify. I would like this done because I've seen so many kids and adults disrespect the flag. 
For an example, people burn it and acting like they're pooping on the flag and so much more. So if we can get the teaching of the USA flag, I think it would teach them to be more respectful of the flag and how to treat it right. Plus, I hate to see people disrespect the flag or just not even do the Pledge of Allegiance and talk or lean on the desk while the rest are saying it, and it's very rude. I've even seen people look away from the flag while it's being posted. We need to respect the flag because millions of people were wounded or even killed for this flag to fly. So we should respect the flag that many people have fought for. Youth for Liberty Commander Adam Fowler. Adam, that's a great letter. Thank you. Now, what happened after that? Well, after that, was it a couple weeks later? I think it was a couple weeks later. Uh, Senator Kelly Anthon got back to me and told me that he would like to have me in Boise. Uh-huh. So we had to go to Boise a while later, but not too long later. It was just oh, after I wrote the letter to Senator Kelly Anthony, and so I went up and told them about what I wa- wanted to get back into school, and they agreed. You know, one of the things I noticed when I was reading your letter just now is that uh, I hate to see people disrespect the flag and not even do the Pledge of Allegiance. Let me ask you something. You're How old did you say, 12? I'm 12, Okay, yes. 12. Uh, every morning on my program, I think you've listened when you're staying at Grandpa's house, haven't you? Yes, I have. What's the first thing we do after we open the program up in the morning? Say the pledge and sing the national anthem. Well, we don't sing the national anthem, but I have Kate Smith and God Bless America. Okay. Yeah, that's what I mean. And uh, we do the Pledge of Allegiance. Now, you wouldn't believe it, Adam, but I've had a lot of people right here living in this area that have criticized me and have asked me in no uncertain terms to stop saying the Pledge of Allegiance. What do you think about that? That's wrong because we say the pledge to pledge the flag and say that we are Americans. Right. And so that is just bad that people even here don't want to say the pledge. You know, and here's the thing. When somebody says, stop that, Zeb, you know, I'm, I'm an old German. And, you know, we're, we're crusty kind of people, old Germans. And when we're told to stop something, you know what I do? I do it even more. So we're going to do it a lot more on my program. That's good. Okay. George, what do you think about your grandson going to the legislature and talking to Senator Kelly Anthon? I was very Get close proud. to that mic, please. That's very proud. Uh, he had wrote a speech for them up there. I also wrote a speech. I was going to speak also. And uh, Adam spoke first, and he, I was very proud of him. He took his notes. He put it on the desk. He looked at it, stood back about two feet or two steps, looked at the notes, looked at at. at uh, uh, Gillis Myers and Dr. Cox and Senator and Fred Woods and all of them that was there, yeah. and started talking. Halfway through, he just reached over, flipped it upside down, kept talking. When he got done, Mr. Smyers says, young man, he says, I know she had your notes, why don't you use them? Adam, he put, put his hand on his chest, and he says, because I spoke from my heart. There you go. And asked me if I had anything to say, and I told him no. Well, tell us a little bit about Senator Kelly Anthon. Now, is he going to call in this morning? He's supposed to be calling in. He couldn't make it this morning. Okay. Kelly, in my opinion, and I'm not saying this to flower up his nest or anything, but I'm going to be very honest. I think Senator Kelly Anthon, Kelly was absolutely the right choice to step in and fill the shoes of Dean Cameron. I think that Dean had done an outstanding job, very, very friendly to this program. And Kelly's been the same way, and I think he's a great, great state senator. I do. He's uh, very patriotic. Uh, he got his start in politics through the Declan American Legion, doing an essay. Uh, he's very adamant. Uh, he, you've seen him speak before. He wears his emotions on his on his sleeve. Right. He, he yeah, gets very emotional, and he's very dedicated to. What do you think, though? Where's this movement going for the respect for the flag, George? What have you seen happen, good, bad, or indifferent, since Adam took the initiative to do this? There's been mixed emotions. Uh, I've talked to some of the uh, teachers and uh, parents of the teachers, what have you, say they just don't have time for it. No, i, I got to ask you this, and I want to be more direct. Uh, these teachers have actually said, oh, well, we just don't have time. We don't, we don't have time. Uh, before Adam went to speak with uh, 
up to Boise, I went around to schools to get letter of support, and I've had some of them say, well, we don't have time to do well, this. Well, now, do they have the material, or are they lacking for anything to teach from, or what's the problem there? On the letters I asked for, all they had to do is have the students write, get on a piece of paper and write why they want the flag education in. Yeah. The uh, Since Senator Kelly Anthony and Adam got this back in when we was up to Boise, the uh, financial guy for the school says, how are we going to pay for this? And I told them that that uh, the Rupert Veterans Memorial Incorporated would buy all school books for Minakesha. I wanted to close that back door so they couldn't back out of it. So basically they were relating it to a money issue. Oh, we don't have the money. But now that they've got the, the knowledge that it's not going to cost them anything, now they're referring to we don't have the time. Uh, that was earlier. I think uh, Kelly's going to be speaking as uh, all the teachers come back. Uh, he'll be speaking with them, tell them it's a law now that uh, he brought the law back up. They yeah. do, they have to do it. What classes, George, is it going to be centered in? History classes, social science? How is it going to be discerned as to which classes or teachers are going to teach this? In the past, the fifth grade they had the flag commencement. That's where they really educate them on flag education. Uh, we went one step further than that. We uh, purchased. Uh, about 1,100 U.S. Constitution books and pamphlets for the teachers to teach. And that would go, I believe, in the eighth grade, I think, during American uh, government. Adam, now that you've been involved in learning about what needs to be done to try to get something through the legislature and learned a lot more about politics and learned about people like Senator Kelly Anthon, what are your hopes for this project about flag education? How big do you want to see this thing go? Well, I'd like to see all of Idaho have it, and then states start follow other states start following flag education, so that it's not just one state that has the education for the flag. What has been said to you personally from maybe a teacher or other students about flag education and what you've done? What have you heard? What have people said to you? Well. A lot of my classmates last year thought that it was good that I was bringing it back, and my teacher uh, liked that I was getting it back, too, but no parents have talked to me about it. So. Really? Yeah. What about that, George? What about the parents? I mean, I would think, uh, maybe I'm of a different generation, which I am, but uh, if somebody like you was really trying to promote uh, the value of our flag and our Constitution and respect for our flag, I know my mom and dad would have been the first ones to go over and shake your hand. It is. I think, uh, Zeb, and I, I'm going to get a lot of uh, flack over this, but we also need to educate the parents and the teachers also. Bingo. The uh, the teachers that that's 110 percent supportive has got uh, either a military brat, uh, Mrs. Fike. She retired 20 years from Air Force. Uh, we got Peggy in the sequel that's very aggressive on flag education. But we've got some of these younger. Oh, what's proper word used? Uh, uneducated or with the veteran movement. Yeah, and uh, they need to. to uh, well, let's be blunt. A lot of the younger teachers coming out of the colleges and universities really have never served this country. They have not really learned the awareness and the respect for our country and the flag. They don't know how to teach it. They need an education themselves. It is, and I'm not lumped them all in. There's some good, no, awesome teachers not. out there. Absolutely. But there's a few here and there that uh, need yeah. educated. Yeah. You know, Adam, this is quite a deal. I mean, you're pretty famous around the state right now, and somebody says, Adam Fowler, they know who you are and they know what you represent. What other issues are you concerned about at your age when you look at the overall scheme of things as you're getting older and pretty soon going to be in high school? What else do you think this country needs to change or do better at? You got any thoughts on that? Well, I know that the racism problems back follow back in the country that needs to stop racism yes i agree with you but you know it just seems like there's a lot of people that like to stir up trouble kind of like stirring up a batch of fudge and they don't care if there's problems they don't care if people get hurt and we've got to stop that in this country don't we yes we do absolutely george you must be pretty proud of your grandson i am i am zeb uh, he's been a little sidekick 
from day one. He's helped me on uh, POW programs, which he will be helping this year again. But uh, he takes initiative. Uh, I know I was really taken back when he told me as a grandpa when you get flag education back in school. Absolutely. I mean, that just... Uh, pretty proud. Well, you know, you have done, you and Donna, your lovely wife, have done so much for the POW MIAs, and now with your grandson, uh, he was with you. He followed you when you were doing all this work with the POW MIAs, and uh, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Well, yeah, and his mom paid me a wonderful compliment. I got a birthday card from him. She says, I hope my son grows up just like his grandpa. Oh, my goodness you know, sakes. You can't ask for anything better than that. Would you let me do the weather forecast real quick? Yes, sir. I've got to do that, and it's brought to everybody by Scarrow's Meats, 331 North Road, Jerome. The number to call, 324-7657. They are changing the way we eat one delicious bite at a time. They are your hometown meat cutter, locally owned and custom meat processor for over 20 years, Scarrow's Meats in Jerome. And right now, here's Gina with the weather. <coughs> Here's your weather forecast for this Tuesday, August 16th. It's going to be a nice day, but a little on the warm side, which is going to remain that way at least until we get towards the weekend. Sunny skies for today. Expect a high of 93. Tonight, low of 56. Tomorrow, mostly sunny skies. High of 91 with an overnight low of 58. Looks like the wind's going to be picking up as we move through the week as well. Steady winds out of the west for today, out of the southeast, right around 5 miles an hour. Tomorrow, kicking up to about 7 for Thursday, partly cloudy, high of 90 winds on the southwest, right around 10 miles an hour. Then for Friday, the winds are going to be dropping the temperatures down quite a bit. It's going to be windy out of the northwest, right around 15 miles an hour. Mostly sunny skies, but only going to see a high of 71 as we get on into the weekend. Looks like it's going to be slightly breezy, and highs are going to be in the upper 70s to low 80s. Yesterday's high was 89. The overnight low was 53. That is your weather for Zebeth Ranch. Oh, Gina, thank you very much. And the weather brought to you by Scarrow's Meats. 331 North Road, Jerome. The number to call, 324-7657. They are changing the way we eat one delicious bite at a time. George, what are some of the aspects of flag education, uh, some of the curriculum, if you will? They uh, uh, teach about uh, proper display, and they get all that done, and, and flag etiquette, some of the codes, and then we usually have the military veterans will come in and do a flag commencement. Uh, Jim Hartwell, Duck, American Legion, I used to go around to the classes and speak to them and make it fun. You'll ask them which one's the smartest, and, yeah. and, you know, and then to get give them a certificate. And uh, I think what surprises me more than anything, Zeb, I've worked with kids from Camp Rainbow to flag education, and you think you're going to go in there and really teach them something? You don't teach them nothing. They teach you. You walk out of there a better person. The questions they ask is unreal. Yeah. You know, you take a, a little fifth grader, will ask you questions, you know, about uh, Pearl Harbor, stuff like this, stuff that uh, they've heard from other people basically you know adam i gotta tell you something i i kid you a lot because i have known you since you were a little bitty boy but you've grown up now to a young man you've got uh, great goals you got great grandparents and uh you got a good head on your shoulders and i just uh, looking at you and listening to you talking about flag education and everything the younger generation in this country with people like you this country is pretty much going to be in good hands. Yeah. I'm proud of you. Thank you. All right. I really feel bad, George, that our dear friend Senator Kelly Anton couldn't have called in this morning because uh, uh, he kind of carried the ball for uh, Adam, didn't he? He did. Uh, he stepped right up the plate, didn't hesitate. Uh, he kept in contact, and uh, he made it happen. But it wasn't really a hard sell, was it? No. I don't. I don't think so. I think you ruffled a few feathers up there, but well, some of the feathers need rustling. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> Zeb, if I may take a moment. Yeah, go ahead. When uh, we took this endeavor on, I made the pledge to buy the books, and I could not have done it without some of my sponsors. Okay. And I would like to give them credit. That's fine. Go right ahead. Okay, we have uh, uh, nobody had turned us down, and is very generous. We had the Rupert Lions. Uh huh. Uh, Rupert Elks, that's where we bought our books from. They made a big donation. Okay. Uh, Ramsey's Electric. Okay. The Tea Party. Rocky Mountain Realtors. Youth for Liberty. 
Combat Veterans Motorcycle Association. Good people. Uh, yeah, big yep. part of it. Yep. Uh, Rupert Veterans Memorial Incorporated. Uh, we had a food booth out, and that uh, raised money off from that. And most of all, the modern woodsman, Jerry Voss. Jerry Voss. He's always there, isn't he? He. Uh, I asked him about that, and he says, you raise the money, we'll match it. And uh, he comes through again. He's done a great job, and uh, whatever the project, if it's really worthwhile, he's going to be there pushing it. It is. If, if you come up with a project that he believes in that will help the community, he's all over it like ugly on a... Uh, anybody else? Uh, yes, uh, this would not, we couldn't have done what we did without promo- the people promoting it. Zeb, you was a big promoter. Well, I thank you. Uh, Cat Country and the Weekly Mailer. Absolutely. But anyway, uh, from the bottom of our hearts and from all the, the kids is going to learn, we want to give a great big thank you to everybody. Uh, George, I appreciate it. i got to get a commercial in here, and we're just about out of time. Don't forget, there's still summer travel time left. Hey, make Grandpa take you fishing. Okay, and don't forget summer travel time and some of the best-selling tires at your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers are on sale now. Oh my goodness! Drive carefully. They've got the best of tires. They've got the best of brake service. They've got the best of front-end alignment, shocks and struts and batteries. And they offer a free pre-trip safety check where they include a visual inspection of your tires, wheels, front-end components, brakes and shocks, struts and batteries. All of this and more at all seven locations of your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, and here they are, Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family in Paul, Daniel on Pole Line in Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland in Burley, the absolute best, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Adam, we've got about a minute and a half left here at the very most. Give us your final thoughts about flag respect and education, real quick. I really think that people need to have respect for the flag is and so I'm really happy that Senator Kelly Anthon could help us get it back into school. There you go. Very well stated. George, final thoughts real quick. Uh big thank you to all the sponsors, uh Senator Kelly Anthon and to Adam Fowler. Uh, they made old man's dream come true. There you go. George Mass and his grandson, Adam Fowler. Very well stated with flag education here in our Magic Valley. George, I'm going to ask you to turn that radio off. I'm getting a little back feed from that, if you would, please. And uh, tomorrow on the program, boy, oh, boy, have we got a full plate. We've got Dave Beagle. We've got the Idaho Fishing Game with our dear friend Kelton Hatch and other guests calling in and being on the program. Don't miss a minute of it. We'll start right at 8.06 here at Zebeth Ranch, and of course, uh, we'll go all the way to 11, and we'll have the very best of what's going on in the world today right here on this program. Right here at K-Bar, 1230 a.m., and streaming live on the internet all over the globe on zebbell.com. God bless you and your family. Wheels, have a great afternoon. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 8.06. Adios, everybody.